shot is safe and it does produce a strong immune response in children ages 5 to 11. Plus the inspiring story of a principal in Baltimore having a huge impact on the lives of her students. Mr. Roker traveled to the Ravens home and will introduce us to the entire group. And then we are going to end the show with one of your favorite Goodfellas, Ray Liotta. He is back to being bad in the latest chapter of the Soprano saga. So, SG, it's time for Today, Today in 30. First, NBC's Gabe Gutierrez joins us from Spokane, Washington, a city being hit hard by the virus. Hi, Gabe. Good morning. Savannah, good morning. Hospitals like this one are having to turn away patients from neighboring Idaho because there's just not enough bed space. Nationwide, some schools are having to shut down in-person classes because of new COVID outbreaks. But overnight, that promising news about a long-awaited vaccine for young children. This morning, Pfizer says its COVID vaccine is effective in children ages 5 to 11. The first of its kind trial for this age group included more than 2,000 kids and concluded the vaccine is safe, well tolerated, and showed robust neutralizing antibody responses. The children were given a smaller dose than the current vaccine used for those 12 and older. Pfizer says it'll now submit the data to the FDA for emergency use authorization. Potentially pivotal news as pediatric COVID cases in the U.S. have jumped by 240 percent since July. New York City schools opened just a week ago. And within four days, we have 812 positive cases, over 600 classroom closures, and one entire school building already closed. In South Carolina, COVID cases have soared from 150 a day to more than 5,000. Schools and even entire districts there are going virtual. And in Philadelphia, five schools have already closed. And like I always tell you, this is the new norm. Also this morning, more confusion over boosters after an FDA advisory panel voted Friday to recommend third shots only for people 65 and older or those with underlying conditions. The Biden administration had previously said a booster rollout for most Americans could begin today, but the FDA hasn't signed off. I think people were not understanding the difference of planning for something and actually what element of that, what proportion of it you're actually going to roll out. But while the vaccine and booster debates ramp up, healthcare workers in the Northwest, like those at MultiCare Deaconess Hospital in Spokane, Washington, are battling their most dire COVID surge yet. Over the weekend, three patients died in this ICU within 24 hours. And right now, this hospital is denying more than half of its patient transfer requests from out of state. It's insane. It is very, very hard as, as healthcare workers to say no to patients. And right now at this hospital, it's all hands on deck. But again, that breaking news, Pfizer says new data shows that its two-shot vaccine is safe and effective for children 5 to 11 years old. The company says that it expects results for children under 5 by the end of the year. We're back on this Monday morning with our network-wide series on the new space race. This morning, that historic mission that everyone is still talking about. Yeah, the all-civilian crew of the Inspiration 4 splashed down on Saturday night after spending three days in orbit and fresh off that remarkable journey. They sat down exclusively with NBC's Lester Holt. Show of hands, who would still rather be up there? <laughs> really? That last view of the Earth and the cupola made me emotional. Wow. Because it was just so awe-inspiring, and I knew I'd be thinking about that for the rest of my life. They've been back on Earth for just over a day, but the crew of Inspiration4 is already missing that spectacular view from space. Our name is Inspiration, and, and to be able to capture that view and to bring it back to Earth is special. Feel this sense of awe. And the historic all civilian space crew blasted off last Wednesday after training with SpaceX for six months. The team spent three days orbiting the Earth, more than 300 miles from the planet. Each of us have been changed in a way that maybe we didn't expect. And for me, it was being able to see the Earth in a way that made me realize there is so much to see in person that I need to go and find those places and explore more. Dr. Cyan Proctor piloted the mission, becoming the first black woman to serve as a spacecraft pilot. Being able to talk to you know girls of color and women of color about my experience and even older women who sometimes when you think that 
you know, the best part of your life has passed you by as you've gotten older, that there's still a lot to learn and a lot to explore and a lot to do. You wanted to be an astronaut for a very long time. You applied uh, at NASA, got into the finals at one point, but didn't make it. How sweet is it? It's just amazing. This is the best way that I could ever imagine going to space with these individuals in this way with SpaceX. I'm, I'm thrilled. Technology entrepreneur and billionaire Jared Isaacman paid for the trip and served as the mission's commander. Where can this be taken, uh, this whole idea of, of putting non-professional astronauts in space? And I think if it's, if, if you know, orbital spaceflight is just the exclusive domain of a, a couple of countries and, and the select few, I don't know, I don't know how far we're, we're going to get. Um, so I think having organizations like like SpaceX that are working very hard to drive down the cost of spaceflight to make it more accessible for others so that all of us can go out and journey among the stars. Isaacman used the trip to help fundraise millions of dollars for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, where 29-year-old Haley Arsenault works as a physician's assistant after surviving pediatric cancer herself as a child. Haley, did you have any idea how much you were inspiring people here on Earth? No, and I, I, that's hard for me to wrap my head around because um, I think of myself as an ordinary person, but I hope that people can relate to me. But isn't that the point? You are an ordinary person? Yes, I that, am. That, isn't that the appeal of all this? Yes. I've had some difficulties in life, but I think everyone has in some way. I think everyone has had to overcome something. And I just, I hope that people can look at my story and and know that holding on to hope that there will be better days is so important. Hi guys, to all of you watching Today in 30, Tia Mori here. Now, stay tuned to see me cook from my new cookbook, The Quick Fix Kitchen. I'll see you soon. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with Today Food, and this morning's guest has a career that spanned more than three decades. But look, she's so young and beautiful. She started young. <laughs> Let's take you back to the 90s. Uh -huh. You probably remember the beloved sitcom yes, Sister, Sister, yes. starring identical twins Tia and Tamara Mowry. Well, one half of that iconic duo is here today. Tia has gone on to become quite the standout in the food world as well with a new book, The Quick Fix Kitchen, full of time-saving tips for a healthier, stress-free life and some easy recipes. And Tia is with us this morning with a few of those recipes. So good to Hi see guys, you. Tia. Hi, Tia. How are you? So nice to see you guys. Everybody looks fantastic. Not as uh, fantastic yeah. as you. Uh -huh. Can you tell us about this banana sushi? Yes, I totally can. Um, this is a quick, easy recipe that the kids are going to love. It's fun. Um, it's loaded with fiber from the tortilla. We have protein from the nut butter and fruit um, mm. from the banana. So let's get this party started, you guys. I know we only have a few minutes here. So basically, I'm going to show you guys how I make my banana sushi roll. Like I said, the kids love it. I take a tortilla and I just go ahead and I spread some nut butter on there. This is mm. sunflower butter because my son, he has an allergy to peanuts. Um, but you can use whatever, you know, nut butter you want. I'm going to take my banana here and Ooh. I am just going to roll this up like a sushi, right? 
Mm. It's mm-hmm. so easy. Cute. The kids, like I said, they love doing this. And I like to just cut off the ends. I say this is like mommy's, you know, mm-hmm. part of the uh, of the uh, the uh, sushi roll. And I just kind of cut them into maybe like one inch kind of like rolls, mm. just like so. Do you guys see how easy and quick yeah, this is? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Is that tortilla warmed um, at all, Tia, or is that just kind of right out uh, of the- No, the tortilla is not warmed at all. Like I said, this is incredibly easy. You just take it right out of the package. Mm-hmm. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little dollop of peanut or just sunflower mm-hmm. butter or whatever mm-hmm. peanut butter if you want. Um, on, on the top, top here, you yeah. can spread this all oh. over if you want uh-huh. the sushi. And then you just add whatever topping. So I have some um, dried cranberries right here. Ooh, I'm just going to put that on the top. Now, would, just could like you that. chill it and save it for later, like an after-school snack or something? You, I wouldn't do that because these are bananas, and bananas yeah. they go right pretty fast. As usual, my instincts you know. are dead wrong. Only in the kitchen. I'm sitting here and helping you out. The answer is no. Um, okay, yeah, sorry, the kids, to you. They absolutely love this. Oh, look at those. It's those so cute. What about those trail mix bark? I think we've got time for the trail mix bark. Yeah, so the trail mix bark, what I love about this, again, it's a great way to get all of the nutrients in for your kids. There's chia seeds in here. Mm-hmm. There's um, almonds in here. You can, again, mm. you can use whatever nuts you like. Also, there's cranberries to get that nice tarty flavor and chocolate mm. chips. And then I also have some cookies over here. These are my cookies in a flash, and I only use, like, five ingredients. Oh, okay. 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 This stuff Easy. is simple and delicious. Yeah. That's Tia, great. thank you. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. (laughs) And important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are bad <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back with our special series, Once in a Lifetime. This is with NBC Sports, shining a light on people making a difference in their communities. It really has become like one mm-hmm. of our favorite series really fast. In case you missed it, Al pulled off an epic surprise just a short time ago for one special principal and an amazing group of students from Digital Harbor High School <laughs> down in Baltimore. In our largest laptop giveaway ever on today, those students and others in the area will receive 3,000 laptops and, this is important, free internet access for the next year, all thanks to our parent company, Comcast. And Al, it was such a great moment. And on top of all that, we saw you on Sunday Night Football. The Ravens also pulled off a a huge win against the Chiefs. It's uh, been a great 12 hours down in Baltimore. What's, What's the mood like? What's everybody feeling? Oh, well, first of all, everybody's thrilled. Besides these students all getting these, these laptops and, and Dr. Taisha Swinton-Buck, 
uh, uh, being being recognized. That was an incredible and awesome football game last night, uh, where where the Ravens, you know, came from behind to beat the uh, world champion Super Bowl uh, Kansas City Chiefs. It was pretty amazing. We were in the stands with a couple of the students hanging out. Uh, and, and got a little shout out from Mike Tirico and the gang there on uh, Sunday Night Football, so that was kind of fun. Uh, but but uh, Dr. Quinton Muck, let me ask you, uh, you know, each of your students is getting a, a laptop. They're all getting uh, free internet for a year. What will this mean? How will this help them going forward? Yep, so connectivity is everything. And so the, the fact that you all were able to bless them with devices as well as connectivity just means that we can continue the work that we started um, during the COVID closure. And I'm just super excited for my kids because they have more access and opportunity with these devices and the Wi-Fi. Digital Harbor has it's seen its, its graduation rates rise tr uh, uh, dramatically, attendance rates, grades have gone up. What's the secret sauce? The secret sauce is just building relationships, connecting with kids, making sure you know who they are and where they come from. And that's really the secret sauce for me. A little bit of TikTok here and there, and here we are. What's, well, how'd the TikTok thing get started? I mean, it was a Christmas uh, challenge that I did. I started putting on Christmas costumes because, you know, I'm an educator. And then I was like, well, the kids are on TikTok, so that's where I'm going. Uh -huh. And so I learned, I practiced. It was hard work. I got it done. I love my TikTok. Let me ask you, Duan, you were in the stands with us last night. Duan, what does uh, this laptop and the Internet access mean for you? This means everything to me. I get a... Uh... Uh, continue my schoolwork, you know, strive for graduation, you know, complete everything on time and stuff like that. So yeah, this means everything. Well, we're really thrilled. And, and again, it's our largest laptop giveaway. With you, uh, you guys each get a free laptop. There are 1,400 laptops going to Digital Harbor and another 1,600 going to schools in Baltimore, our awesome. largest ever. And we've got one more thing. I know you guys have been out here for a long time. Our, our, our friends at Fadley's have each donated a, a crab cake for you tonight. Everybody like crab cakes? Yeah. yeah. Good crab cake. We're from cake. Baltimore. I'm from Walmart, Baltimore. that's right. There's over 100 years worth of crab cakes. This crab cake is not over 100 years old. It's very fresh. But uh, so, Dr. Swinton, uh, Dr. Swinton Buck, thank you so much. Guys, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. And guys, this has been a heck of a time. It is really inspiring to see so what great. they've been doing down here in Baltimore. We also want to thank everybody at the Ravens, uh, the organization. They've been terrific. terrific. And I want to thank my crew, who has been fantastic, mm -hmm. helping pull the, all this off. Oh, so, guys, uh, back beautiful. to you. And enjoying the crab cake. Mm. And a beautiful day day to do that. Some exciting news around here. We're all celebrating the launch of Hoda's new podcast, Woo! Making Space yeah. with Hoda Copy. The first two episodes are out today. And episode one, I'm talking about it, and you're sitting right here. But Hoda sits <laughs> down with Pastor place. Michael Todd of Transformation you know Church, of course. of course, from Tulsa. Yeah. My old stopping grounds in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is... I don't want to say he's killing it because he's a pastor, so that's like the wrong yeah. verbiage. Shredding it. There you go. Yeah. He's so popular. They talk about the importance of progression over perfection, the fact that change is possible. Pastor Todd, you can follow him on Instagram. He's amazing. He's made changes in his own life. Here's what he had to say. Did your change, did your moment, did it come like a lightning bolt? Did your moment of change come in baby steps and take years? Like Yeah. My one of my greatest sayings, and if you come around our church, our organization, you'll hear this all the time: progression, not perfection. Hmm. I think that this, if this could become people's mantra, they would be able to do so much more when they allow the little movement forward to be the win instead of this big, like you said, lightning bolt mm -hmm. moment. It wasn't that for me. It was like this year, I'm gonna become better at listening and keeping my word hmm. and next year i'm going to try to stop eating a, a gallon of ice cream every night before i go to bed and this year i'm going to open my scriptures and i want to read at least 10 minutes a day it, like it just has been like baby steps I'm can in. you see why his church is packed I'm yes I'm in. Chanel, he told the story about how he was in some tiny space they had zero money and he said he said to his congregation of 20 some odd people we're going to raise money and they were like great because the pipes need fixing he was like no 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 not for us for somebody else yeah i sat there for 45 minutes with this guy i cannot tell you the life lessons i learned mm -hmm. he he writes down his intentions each morning and since i interviewed him i started doing oh, the same so great. and he just shows you like it 
it is about baby steps. And he said, sometimes you're afraid to start. And he made an analogy. He said, a car that's moving is easy to, you can steer it in different ways. If you're not moving, you're going nowhere. Uh, just, he's basically like, just start in motion. Yeah. You might make some wrong turns. Who cares? Mm -hmm. This is why this podcast is yes. so good. But by the way, when I was yeah. done, I wanted to like I wanted to go on a run. Like yeah. I felt so energized, and I kept good. thinking, I can only live my life. You can only live yours. You can mm -hmm. live yours, and you can live yours. I, I don't know your life sure. lessons. I try to learn from here, but these guys are giving you their secrets. So I was like, I can't live your life, but I can learn yeah. about yours and apply it. It's about application. Well, you're the perfect person to draw Seriously. this out because oh you have such God. enthusiasm. You're like a sponge. You know, you really. <laughs> soak in everything and you see actually you think it's everyone who's giving you the wisdom yeah. but I actually think you hear the wisdom and then you like translate it for the that's rest it. of us. That's it. And What's so I'm really looking forward so to the podcast. Good. What's the story in the title Making Space? Um, because you know what I realized when I sit and do interviews you know how fast they seem yes. and you don't get a chance and whenever I can exhale and sit with someone and you actually make space so for good. them, all of a sudden all the good stuff comes. Yeah. And I feel like this is that opportunity. It's not rushed. No, yeah. it's slow motion and I've been listening to it myself and I'm learning how to be better at it. So enjoy the first couple of episodes We're and know sold. there's more to, there's more to come. Now let me ask you this because yeah. I saw that there's video of it. Yeah. But I thought this was a podcast, which is like radio, which to me, like you get to wear your sweats and yes. you have to be dressed <laughs> up. Yeah, yeah, I so what's up with that? Well, if you want to watch it, you can. Oh. But I'm about listening too. Oh. Yeah. I like to have like earbuds in, yeah. and so and good. I've been I've been like relearning things as I listen to it again. So it's like you want to take okay. notes. I do, and I am. Can we tell people how to download it? Yeah. Yes. How do yes. you? Making so, space <laughs> with Hoda Copy. Yeah. Just go to just search Making Space with Hoda Copy on Apple's podcast, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, or you can use your smartphone camera. Oh, the QR code. Yeah, we always have that, right? You just scan it on your screen there. Do we have it? We should, yeah, it's right yeah. there. We should leave that it up for a thing. few seconds. Yeah. So It'll take, take you right where you need to be. Thank you. I love that. It's Thank gonna, you. It's going to be fun. I hope you all enjoy it. And let me know. And I'm going to take you jogging with me. And they may not something. be people you know. It's not like you that's might why be. Who is that person? Yeah. You knew you knew Pastor Michael Todd, but that's different. I was in Tulsa. They're not all famous people. No. I hope you dig it. I hope you do. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes. This is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, we have to say we love all of our guests around here, but there are some days we're just a little more excited than others, and today's one of them because... Look who's here, Ray Liotta. Okay, you could say that he is one of the original wise guys. Ray played mobster Henry Hill in the 1990 Oscar-winning crime drama. We all remember it. Goodfellas, arguably one of the most iconic gangster roles of all time. And he's back to his old mobster ways in the highly anticipated Sopranos saga, The Many Saints of Newark. Yeah, in the sneak peek, Ray's character, Hollywood Dick, uh, <laughs> is at dinner with his family. Just back from a trip to Italy with a girlfriend in tow. Take a look. I told you, Subpoena, that you're going to live the life of a proud American lady. And I'm going to have my second set of children with you. And they'll be deluged with a life that they could never even imagine over there. Like you were, Dick, as a kid. These will be your brothers and sisters. <laughs> so, Giuseppina is your stepmother, Dickie. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> Kai, uh, that, Hi, Ray. Right. Yeah, Ray, we're How so happy you? to have you I here. I can't watch it. How can I? I don't know. I just... You don't watch yourself? No. I've seen a few of my movies, but yeah. mostly no. How come? What, what feeling do you get when you watch it? Uh... I don't know, like, I should have done this, maybe if I did ah. this, then you say, people look and say, oh, God, it's great when I turn my head this way. Yeah. I just, I don't know. You're critical yeah. yourself. Too self-critical. Yeah. It's good stuff. Well, it's funny, we actually can't do that either. Yeah. Because yeah. We're, we're like, why does that shirt? It's so, yeah. okay, the last time you were here, I have to give you a little apology, and maybe we need to, this was in 2017, Kathy Lee was here. Yeah. I was hanging out with her. She liked your cologne. Obsessed. She right. said you smelled really good. Which she asked do. me to smell you, which is a strange thing to ask. <laughs> and this is what's happened. Smell it. You get that side, I'll get this. Wow. See what I mean? Uh oh, oh no. Oh, oh, what is wrong with you? I don't know. Oops, I'm oh so sorry, God. Ray. Ray's coat. George! <laughs> Lopez is going to be here on Thursday. Oh, oh, and you can oh. see the two premiere of Shades of Blue. Okay, okay. let's yeah, smell him. You get that oh, side Oh, oh Ray. Oh. Ray. Ray, did you get it dry cleaned? It was a, no, she did. Oh, you paid yeah, for it. Yeah. it out the, I got yeah. it dry cleaned. It was a really nice suede yeah. coat. Is that why you wore something that was kind of waterproof yeah, today? Yeah, totally. Water. It was $7,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, well, we're sorry. We, we just want to apologize. But by the way, uh, the many saints of Newark, you seem like you're tailor-made for this role. But I would, ima I would imagine that I thought, well, I bet you he yeah. watched all the Sopranos before this. But you actually did not. I, I what? Watch, Watch the, the Sopranos. Sopranos. No, 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 How no. Come? I saw the first year. Yeah. I don't know. I just wasn't into watching TV for yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah. And as you get older, you sit back more. It's more relaxed. Yeah. But it just wasn't something. I saw a couple episodes. Yeah. And something almost worked out. David Chase came up when I was doing Hannibal, and he talked to me about a, a role. Yeah. But it just didn't, didn't work, work out. out. So. so what was it about this role that you thought fit for you? I don't know. Look at the name. <laughs> 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 The sainthood is what you're interested in. Well, sort of. <laughs> but also, what this, first of all, everybody is buzzing about this. Yeah. And one of the reasons why is that the one of the leads yeah. is is this incredible kid, Michael, yeah. who happens to be yeah, the son of, yes. Yeah, James Gandolfini's so, son. son. So what has that been like watching him in this role? He's great in it. Yeah. And I, I, I never had any scenes with him. Uh, so I didn't get to talk to him, yeah. And, yeah. but I, I'd like to because I was just wondering what was going on yeah. in your head. Yeah. What are you thinking about? Like, it, it was just a, a I don't know if it was risky because he's great in it. Yes. He's really, really good in it. Yeah, really, yeah. really good. These kind of roles seem to be tailor made for you. They're like that. This is this is your lane. Did you ever think, you know what? I want to do something that's a little bit more warm and fuzzy. I want to try other stuff. Well, I have not to get defensive. <laughs> Karina, Karina with Whoopi. Oh yeah. That was sweet. Uh, Dominic and Eugene. Oh, yeah. I did two movies with the Muppets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? You also did some. Some. We have a little footage of one of your original yeah, your roles. Original. Can we see it? No, I wasn't gonna do it. <laughs> I was real smart, Joey. What? I'm not gonna keep my own lane. I'm not gonna follow her. No. So instead, now you're online with uh, Jordan Scott. What do I care about Jordan Scott? Hey, man, listen. You better care. Believe me, I know. <laughs> Sandy. You don't care about Jordan Scott. Really right. Do you care about Jordan Scott? Uh, what was the last time you saw that? I, I'm, it's um, uh, a long time ago. This yeah. was if in ever. another world, right? Was this your first role? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I got it six months out of, uh, out of college. Yeah. And when I first started, I never wanted to be an actor, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. And then the movies I would watch, were the, it was in the 70s, and they're like really intense things. Uh, but the soap came along. Yeah. I talked to my dad. What do you think? He says, well, how many times have you been in front of a camera? <laughs> I said, none, really. Said, well, there's your answer. <laughs> so you better try it. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It was a great training ground. They had great actors doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, congrats on this new yes. role. And congrats on your engagement. engagement. Uh, Are you so happy? <laughs> yeah, totally. What is it about her? That, I don't know. We're like two peas in a pod. Yeah. It just it just works. Right, JC? <laughs> She's smoking, smoking her cigar. Okay. Well, congratulations. Need yes. I say more? No, no exactly. Smoke. All right. Thanks, okay. Ray. The Many Saints of Newark is in theaters, and it's on HBO Max on October 1st. And you're going to want to tune in tomorrow on today because presidential inaugural poet Amanda Gorman, she'll be with us. She's got a beautiful children's book that you're going to want to pick up. She does, and she's just so amazing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great morning tomorrow, bright and early. Get it started right here with us on today. We'll see you then.
everybody. Thanks for joining us here at Today All Day. I've, I've met some really great folks and, and had the chance to explore some amazing places. And I wanted to share some of these special moments with you again. I hope you enjoy these next interviews as much as I have. Last summer, we started a tradition, and we did it right smack in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. You know, most of us, obviously, were still working remotely because of social distancing. We hadn't seen each other in person at that point for months. That is until we reunited outside in a colleague's backyard to check in on how we were all mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, well, it's been exactly a year since that reunion, and we decided, well, let's get together again and reflect on our experiences. Guys, let's raise a glass. Yes. Yes. To some. To all of us. To us. To one foot Tap away. that. Yeah. To being together. Yes. 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 Cheers. No mask. No mask. No mask. No mask. Yes. No mask. Yes. It's hard to believe that just one year ago, this would not have been possible. Can I have some of the lobster salad? The crispy polenta, yeah. anyone? This is a veggie option, but it's fried, so I'm going to say yes. Sitting inside a restaurant, eating, drinking, and just being married with friends who are family seemed an awfully long way away. There we go, Uncle yeah. Al. But then, three months ago, we got vaccinated, and our community started opening back up. I knew uh, things were better when I could sit on your lap. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, when they let us sit next to each other. I've always said that. Right? And all of a sudden, once we start moving closer, we were like, look at us, we're on top of each other. I'll tell you, outside the workspace, your daughter's wedding. Oh, yeah. And folks were sweating and dancing and mm -hmm. singing and hugging. Like Everybody all. was vaccinated. Yes. And having you guys there meant the world. It was like a coming out party. It was. You know, and it was really terrific. And I was happy to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the other big, big changes, I remember we were talking about a year ago from right now, when literally there was, literally, there was occasionally a nurse walking by. Yeah. That's all you yeah. saw outside. Oh, yeah. There was a time when it was just you and our camera operator, Mason, mm -hmm. and no one else. But fast forward to now, you guys, we look outside. Yeah. Coldplay was on the oh, plaza. Yeah. I don't think we'll take these things for granted anymore, nope. seeing people who come to the plaza or having music out there, or even the people that we work with. When, when mm -hmm. they started adding back our mm. camera operators, mm -hmm. the sound guys, yeah. the floor directors, mm -hmm. hair. Right. the props folks. Yeah, hair and makeup. Let's, yep. let's just well, light a candle. Some let's some raise a glass, <laughs> some some hair and makeup. Hair and makeup. <laughs> and everybody yeah. said amen. amen. <laughs> you know what I do miss? What? I do That's miss true. seeing Vale and Charlie. Oh, oh yeah. that I have to say, watching them pop up, literally, it's like it was like so calming, and it felt so at home. I still remember just like calming watching them. for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Defense Secretary. Out of here. Right. I don't know how you pulled that off. And by the way, the graphics department. Jack. Uh, no, Jack. Jack, Jack Daly. Jack Daly. Needs, Jack get a little more. Jack promise. needs an agent. I mean, he we get <laughs> stopped <laughs> now, and what? like, yo, you're the kid that holds the sign. Like, he, are you serious? People. Just, they recognize the arms. Yeah, he's like, look, it's me. That's me. <laughs> How did it feel, Carson, when you came back to the studio? Like, it felt great. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I started to harbor a little bit of guilt. I mean, I love mm -hmm. my kids so much, and I felt bad because it came at the cost of a pandemic where people were losing their lives. Sure. But I was so selfishly happy to be home with my kids yeah. because I travel so much. But I didn't move to New York to stay at home and work from right. home. I moved to right. be with my colleagues, to be in the environment yeah. that excites me and that we're lucky enough to get to do every day. How are your right. kids? How you did know, Del and Sibby do? Del and Sibby, you know, we're moving. And the uh, day before yesterday, we were going through some papers. And at the beginning of the pandemic, it was suggested that you have kids write letters mm. to, you know, sort of cope with how they're feeling. And uh, Del wrote a letter. And he said, you know, I forget who it was too, but he said, dear blah, 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 please make the pandemic go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please have people stop dying. Please mm -hmm. have people stop getting sick. And just, you know, yeah. pud puddles. Because you, you know, We've started to forget just a right. year ago, like yeah. how yeah. how scary it was for kids, especially. Mm -hmm. We would not have probably gotten through the pandemic had it not been for my wife. Wow. Well, yeah. And she got COVID, right? She did. She, yeah. she had COVID. And go through that too. And and let me tell you, like we took it, you know, we obviously took it very seriously. So we had to sequester her in the room. Siri got a false positive during this whole thing. Wow. She's sequestered in a room, and I have all four kids. I was on the phone with the doctor. Who's gonna raise my children? <laughs> <laughs> well, how about yours? Um, it's just so funny now how they look back at pictures and wonder why we didn't have a mask on yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And we still worry about our kids. They're not yeah. vaccinated. They're little and they're running around. But Haley got so used to it. Now we leave and she's like, Mom, do you have your phone? Do you have a mask? Right. That's what they <laughs> say. Oh, yeah. 
yeah. yeah. So it's incredible how, how they, they roll adapt. with it. They get used to the mask. The day the CDC said, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear the mask yeah. outdoors. I picked up Bail at the bus stop with no mask. She comes down the bus stops with her mask and she's like, mom, where's your mask? Yeah. Put it on. <laughs> she's like, yeah. she's got a job at the CDC waiting for <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I think everybody's coming out and just feeling good, like, hey, look, we've come through something, and we're still going through it, but yeah. by God, you know, thanks thanks to a whole lot of people, we're able to live like America. Yeah, I mean, talk about appreciating things you never even thought twice about in your life. Right. Like walking to the store with your kid without a mask yep. on, or going to the beach, or getting right. in the car, getting on a plane. Yep. Yep. Oh, like this, right. the chill out. Yeah. Needed Love breath it. mints again. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but we're back, baby. Yes. Woo! We're back. Cheers to being back. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Oh, oh by the way, that was a, what a blast that was. And it's that so fr fun. the fried polenta oh, killed it. at Scotto's. Off and we do want to thank our good friends, the Scotto family. We kind of took over the restaurant. <laughs> we nudged into their lunch uh, rush. <laughs> yeah. Fresco by Scotto. It was an amazing day. And J.K. Long really did a beautiful, oh, it was a beautiful job. job. Yeah. Jen, Jen and that crew, yeah. by the yeah. way. Uh, by the way, if you oh, want to yeah. see more they of that uh, conversation, you can stream our full conversation on Today All Day. Again, that's mm -hmm. today.com slash all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Al came in and ordered uh, the Aperol Spritz, which oh, yeah. started a that whole started thing. It. Yeah, I got red wine on the yeah. heels of that. Say, yes, say that. that was, so, by the way, delicious, Al. Roker, what's in the Spritz again? Well, it's Aperol, uh, Prosecco, a little or a slice of orange. And in, in honor of Italy winning the, the, the cup, uh, the Euro Cup, uh, it's, it's part of what the Italians call aperitivo, where you, mm. you have these great drinks and little nibbles. It's, it's, it's very civilized. He's so cultured, uh, that Roker, isn't he? Easily. he is. Oh, wow. He is. <laughs> no, he, he just likes to drink. We are back with a terrific <laughs> edition of Buddy Up. Once again, we are pitting the news nerds versus the weather wizards. A couple of weeks ago, we faced off as we watched storms roll in, playing some backyard games. News nerds came out on top. So this time, we went to Pier 25 Mini Golf here in New York City to settle the score again. All right, ready for an in-person Buddy Up? It's going yes. down. I want to win again. That's right, because we have soundly yeah. trans <laughs> trounced you both. I'm ready to win. Come on, on losers. <laughs> what a great role model you Let's are for go. your children. The third hour gang getting back together on a hot summer day for a mini version of mini golf. We had just five holes to determine whether the news nerds or weather wizards would come out on top. Purple, I'm going to do green. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hi. Rules, I'm simple. Excited. Each player, four strokes. Win the hole, move on. Didn't take very long for the sabotaging to start. Right, here we go. Come on. But soon, we were up and putting. Yes! Yeah. All right. Great right start. Woo, Great start. Go, 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 That's go. what I'm talking about. Me? News nerds up by one, but not even the sound of New York City sirens could stop my Dylan. Hey, go, 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 go. Oh, come so on. rude, and it's so, hey, go, go, and go, it's go, so go. echoey in here. Wow. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Yes! Oh. Hole in one. There we go. Oh. Yes. Pressure's oh, on. Your turn, Mr. Melvin. Well, you stop it! <laughs> Keep it down! Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. Uh oh, uh oh. Is that out? Oh! 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 <laughs> oh, oh! It's in the rough! So, to be clear, we're tied at one hole apiece. Yes. Yes. Okay. She blew it! Come on, news nerd. Come on, big mouth. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, now. Come on, Come on. Come on baby. Oh! oh. 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 Be careful, you're pregnant. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh! If you drop this in, we're tied for the hole. There yes! you go. Yes! Yes! Come on! We're still in it, baby. Tie break okay. the hole. No pressure. All right. Round. Up. 
down. Come on, come oh, on, come on, come on. Yes! No! no. Oh, yes! No. What? Yes! <laughs> nice shot. After Dylan's second hole in one of the game, things not looking too good for the news nerds. Until Chanel pulled out her terrific talent. That's enough. Come on down here, baby. Come on down. This looks good. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Get in the oh, hole. Oh, no! Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Yes! Get in the hole. Yes! Get in the hole. Yes! Get in the hole. Yeah, baby! They win that hole. Pretty impressive. So, all coming down to the fifth and final hole. News nerds victorious against weather wizards. Oh! Oh, that's too much. Uh-oh, oh, 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 oh. No, 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 Bye-bye! Bye-bye. No, no, no. oh. Go, 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 go. Oh, that's no. not good. Oh, oh, oh. Right, His strategy of having no strategy appears to be paying off. <laughs> yep. It was up to Chanel to win it all. You've been doing this all day. All day. All you got to do is drop this putt. Ready? <laughs> It's over. Yeah. We finally conquered the evil demon. Congratulations. Congratulations. Why do you have to be so nice? Thank I don't you. want to be nice. Congratulations. You are a Come sore on. loser. Come on, bring it in. No? no. Yes, Sam. No. Come on. No, no. Right. that's disgusting. I don't, I don't like my own Come sweat. Come I don't want Come yours. On. You say this. Bring the baby in here. 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 <laughs> like it, sweaty, huh? In fact, I would tell you that if I knew you were going to hug me, I would have forfeited. <laughs> <laughs> Just walked away. Because everybody was so sweaty. We got a little sweaty. Oh, oh yeah. man, it was oh, nasty. We're going to so need a, a mega rematch because now I think it's two to, it's two, two, to two in overall yeah. buddy ups. We lost in so. ping pong. We lost in Pictionary. Pictionary. Right, so, but we won the last. Oh, that's right. We won the last, last two. We won the last. last. So, of course, we won right, in so driving. we need something big. Something big. <laughs> what can we do? You should suggest something. Yeah, suggest some buddy ups for us to do. At third hour today, what should our next buddy up? We so enjoy beating y'all. That was so much fun. That's right. I want to take them fishing. That's what I want. That would be fun. Yes. I do want to do that. Yes, I can do a lot of things. Can you do that? No, I, I just guess. can't drink gin. That's right. <laughs> Which she misses so, so much. much. Big thanks to Pier 25. Yes. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's your Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad bad. <laughs> Kalish is going to win gold for the United States. And Litherland is trying to make it a 1-2 finish for the Americans. Before the medals, the events. And that will get through. And here comes McClenney to try and win it. And the United States walks it off. And the COVID testing. A few items that are essential to our living here in the village. Every day we spit into one of these. All 600 plus athletes had to get to Tokyo. It's time for Tokyo. Let's get after it. The journey full of airport shenanigans, including the U.S. women's volleyball team giving their own That's So Raven impressions. But finally, all the athletes making it and ready for the next stop, Olympic Village. 
U.S. Olympian April Ross speaking to Savannah, giving her the inside scoop on living in the village. Tell me about your movements, what you're able to do, what you're able to see. It feels pretty normal. We're allowed to go to the cafeteria whenever we want. We wear gloves. We use a lot of hand sanitizer all the time. We can take buses out to the high performance center, um, to the venue, and it's pretty free flowing. You know, there's lots of guidelines, but um, to be honest, it feels decently normal here in the village. U.S. rower Michelle Schexer echoing April's sentiments. I do feel very comfortable here. It's unfortunate, I think, that it is, um, you know, receiving some of the negative press that it is. But honestly, in the village, I feel safer there than I have in any city in the States in the past 18 months. But there is one thing we keep hearing about. So I've been getting this question over and over again. I've been getting this question a lot. So let's dive into it. Those cardboard beds. Okay, so it is cardboard. Even under here, everything is cardboard, so you might think they're not very sturdy. Let's test it out. <laughs> hey, oh, she's sneezing. So peaceful, probably the only one who could sleep on the bed. <laughs> U.S. men's volleyball player Eric Shoji showed TikTok a full tour of his dorm room. Let's go. We have a fridge, a microwave, some coffee. Oh my gosh, our trash. This is our little living room, kind of small. And the best part is our balcony view. And Grace Luzak from US Rowing, giving her own behind the scenes tour. No Japan tour would be complete without the super tech savvy toilet. And yes, laundry still has to get done, even in the Olympic Village. Yeah, what's happening is I'm doing about 10 people's laundry. The women's gymnastic team choosing not to stay in the village after an alternate member on the team tested positive, but had some fun of their own in a hotel nearby. And we can't forget about the food. Japan is known for their cuisine and these athletes are digging in. Welcome to dinner. In the Olympic Village, there are two dining halls. There's the main dining hall, and then there's the casual dining hall, which is all Japanese food. So Kavik and I are checking out tonight. Let's see what we got. First up, salmon salad. Yeah. Teriyaki beef, rice ball, slash musubi. And this is okonomiyaki. It's like a savory Japanese pancake. This food is so good. Of course, they are also here to compete. But as they wait for their moment, several attempted the latest viral TikTok challenge. Oreos pass the Oreo. Team USA making the most of this once in a lifetime experience on and off the field. Go Team USA. Go USA! And taking us along for the ride every step of the way. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. 
Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Tokyo, here we come. Taking off for Tokyo, an event much anticipated by athletes, the audience, and even today's show anchors. Okay, heading to Japan. Um, I'm dressed like the athletes. <laughs> I'm gonna be wearing all red, white, and blue. It's not easy getting somewhere in the time of COVID. We've got all those safety precautions, and this is no exception. Well, we left Saturday at 1.30, and now we will... 10, Tokyo time, and we are officially here at the game to begin. Tokyo, nearly 7,000 miles from New York City, and there are a lot of steps to go through before even getting on the ground. I'm going to go find Craig, and our executive producer, Tom Mazzarelli, and start to make our way through customs and COVID protocol. Here we go. Testing at home, testing at the airport, checkpoints, lines, and more checkpoints. Making our way in line, getting it. We've got our OCHA stuff, and now it's check out, I guess, more COVID stuff. Almost there. Almost so there. close. Maybe. So close. Smooth sailing for Craig and our executive producer to get their COVID test results. Me, not so much. So your testing numbers come up on this board. Uh, uh, Craig's came up. Tom's came up about 10 minutes ago i'm still waiting we all went together so this is the first hitch at least for me oh well so far what are you gonna do and a negative test result is required to enter and so i wait all right gentlemen well i've uh, got to get another test so boom we'll see you guys later hopefully good luck out all right we'll see you at the hotel we're with you but finally after four hours at the airport <sighs> well made it at the hotel in Tokyo, and it is gorgeous. Where I still have to quarantine along with everybody else. For safety, we're broadcasting from our hotel, making it work and home all in one. Good morning from Tokyo, today's home away from home. There are ways to make quarantine fun. For example, Savannah using the time to work out in her room because we can't go to the gym or even really outside. The only times we are allowed out is for a 15 minute a day walk. Walking, walking, more walking. Though short, it is a chance to discover some treasures unique to Tokyo, like the endless vending machines. Japan has the most vending machines per capita, more than 4 million. Keir Simmons is out of quarantine and experiencing some more of what Japan has to offer. Ow, my brother, when you get free from quarantine, you're literally going to be able to breathe again by visiting ancient forests like this one. One thing you should note, the bears roam free here too. But we can't forget why we're really here, the games. And even though we've had to test and prepare for this, it's nothing compared to what these athletes have been working so hard for. Go get it! Oda spending the day cheering on the women's gymnastics team as they brought home the silver medal in the team competition. Oh my God, look who's here. Wait, look, look, look. Oh, she's going, go, go, go. Yay! As the competition heats up in Tokyo, athletes swinging by our studio with their medals. And even though COVID has prevented the normal audiences from being in the stands, we all still cheer on our athletes and appreciate the hard work everyone has put in to making these games a reality. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. This is what you see at home. Welcome to today and welcome to Tokyo. It is great to have you with us on this Monday morning. Sweeping views of Tokyo Bay. State of the art Olympic venues. We got ushered off to the bus and then onto the village. Gold medal hopefuls roaming the athlete's village. Back on the bus to go back to the village, I was exhausted. But what you don't see is our village. Meet the Today Show team responsible for producing a one-of-a-kind morning show in a one-of-a-kind year. In COVID times here in Tokyo, we have to be uh, really careful about how and when we shoot. We have special permission to shoot today at Sky Tree, but we had to come in before the general public came in. And can you tell we're just a little bit excited to be here? This is our Today Show workspace. We've got writers and producers all gathering everything that you see in the morning. It's sent to New York, cut together and put together in snippy little packages for your consumption. The biggest adjustment, the 13 hour time difference. Here in New York, we have shifted our schedule so we start later at night to match our team in Tokyo's hours. That way, when they send back video, we can grab it and put it into our stories for the morning. It is uh, quarter to one right now. We still have a few more hours before air, luckily, so we have more time to put it together, but hope you guys We're are doing well. well. A few hours before we hit the airwaves. Can I get revised questions? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Hello, Team Tokyo. Maz, how are we doing? We have our morning rundown meeting. The rundown is sort of the Bible of the show. It's the chapter and verse for what we're doing from top to bottom. It's the order. It's who's doing what, when they're doing it, and where they're doing it. And hopefully we stick to it. But a lot of times it changes all the way through the end of the show. So, Matt, can you walk us through the first half hour? You guys, I got a rundown. You need a pronouncer. You need a pro now. <laughs> After the rundown meeting, it's a complicated ballet between the Tokyo team and our New York control room. The biggest challenge is just the communication amongst everybody. You have producers over in Tokyo shooting stories. They're talking to producers back in New York who are editing them. They have to be on the same page. As far as the control room, it's here in New York. All the talent, the cameras, stage manager, they're in Tokyo. The stage manager acts more as a director for me since I can't be there. It's just a lot of coordination, a lot of communication to make sure everybody's on the same page. Once we get closer to that 7 a.m. start time, it's all hands on set. Hi. Over here, we've got our actual set. So you can see this is where it all happens, right here. There's our set. There's our stage manager, Yosef. It's all happening right here for today, behind the scenes. In five, four, three. But even across 13 time zones and nearly 7,000 miles, 
our village comes together to wake you up with those same familiar smiles. Hi everybody, good morning, welcome to today. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday morning. Hi, Today All Day, we've got a great show for you on this Monday morning, including an all day exclusive chat you can only see here. But let's kick it off with Pop Start. Today is the launch of Hoda's new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Copy. And Chanel has all the details. Check it out. Best time of the morning. Uh -huh. Chanel Jones. No pressure. In for Carson. In for Carson this morning. We have some good things for you. First up, a new royal baby has been born. Princess Beatrice and Eduardo Mapelli Mosey welcomed a little girl into the world over the weekend. The baby was born at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London on Saturday, and she weighed six pounds and two ounces. Mommy and daughter are reported to all be doing well, and of course, we're sending congratulations to them this morning. Beautiful pictures. Next, and just like that, during last night's Emmys broadcast. Cast, HBO Max released the first clips of the highly anticipated Sex in the City continuation series. You want to see a quick little clip? Uh, yeah. Yes. Just like that. And just like that. That's all you get. Just like that. Okay. That's all you get. Just like that. A very brief well, tease of big. what's to come for Carrie Bradshaw and friends in the new show. Fans online thrilled to see Carrie and Big happy together once again. Noticeably missing, of course, is actress Kim Cattrall, who played Samantha Jones in the original series. And Just Like That is currently in production and set to premiere a little later this year. All right, next up, The Lost Boys. Long before Twilight ever hit the big screen, this was the must-see teen vampire movie. You remember, well, now a reboot of the 1987 cult classic is in the works. Warner Brothers revisiting the comedy horror hit that starred Corey Haim and Jason Patrick, as well as Corey Feldman, Diane Weiss, and Kiefer Sutherland. And in case you missed it, the Lost Boys followed two brothers who moved to a California town and get mixed up with an evil vampire biker gang. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, the upcoming film has already cast two young stars. So here they are, A Quiet Place's Noah Jupe and Jade Martell of Apple TV Plus's Defending Jacob. They've landed the leading roles. So many people are excited to see more of that when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And finally, some exciting news around here. We're all celebrating the launch of Hoda's new podcast, Woo! Making Space. Yeah. With Hoda Copy, the first two episodes are out today. In episode one, I'm talking about it, and you're sitting right here, but Hoda sits down with Pastor Michael Todd of Transformation. You know of course. Of course, from Tulsa. In my old stopping grounds in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is... I don't want to say he's killing it because he's a pastor, so that's like the wrong yeah. verbiage. Shredding it. There you go. Yeah. He's so popular. They talk about the importance of progression over perfection, the fact that change is possible. Pastor Todd, you can follow him on Instagram. He's amazing. He's made changes in his own life. Here's what he had to say. Did your change, did your moment, did it come like a lightning bolt? Did your moment of change come in baby steps and take years? Like Yeah. My one of my greatest sayings, and if you come around our church, our organization, you'll hear this all the time. Progression, not perfection. Hmm. I think that this if this could become people's mantra, they would be able to do so much more when they allow the little movement forward to be the win instead of this big, like you said, lightning bolt mm -hmm. moment. It wasn't that for me. It was like this year I'm going to become better at listening and keeping my word. Hmm. And next year, I'm going to try to stop eating a, a gallon of ice cream every <laughs> night before I go to bed. And this year, I'm going to open my scriptures and I want to read at least 10 minutes a day. It, like, it just has been like baby steps. I'm Can in. you see why his church is packed? I'm in. Yes. I'm in. Chanel, he told the story about how he was in some tiny space. They had zero money. And he said, he said to his congregation of 20 some odd people, we're going to raise money. And they were like, great, because the pipes need fixing. He was like, no, 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 not for us, for somebody else. Yeah. I sat there for 45 minutes with this guy. I cannot tell you the life lessons I learned. Yeah. He, he writes down his intentions each morning. And since I interviewed him, I started doing oh, the same. So great. And he just shows you, like, it is about baby steps. And he said, sometimes you're afraid to start. And he made an analogy. He said, a car that's moving is easy to, you can steer it in different ways. If you're not moving, you're going nowhere. Oh. Just He's basically like, just start in motion. Yeah. You might make some wrong turns. 
Who cares? Oh. This is why this podcast is yes. so good. But by the way, when I was yeah. done, I wanted to like I wanted to go on a run. Like yeah. I felt so energized, and I kept good. thinking, I can only live my life. You can only live yours. You can mm. live yours, and you can live yours. I, I don't know your life sure. lessons. I try to learn from here, but these guys are giving you their secrets. So I was like, I can't live your life, but I can learn mm. about yours and apply it. It's about application. Well, you're the perfect person to draw this sure. out because oh you have God. such enthusiasm. You're like a sponge. You know, you really. <laughs> soak in everything and you see actually you think it's everyone who's giving you the wisdom yeah. but I actually think you hear the wisdom and then you like translate it for the that's rest it. of us. That's it. And so What's, I'm really looking forward to so the podcast. Good. What's the story in the title Making Space? Um, because you know what I realized when I sit and do interviews you know how fast they seem yes. and you don't get a chance and whenever I can exhale and sit with someone and you actually make space so for good. them all of a sudden all the good stuff comes yeah. and I feel like this is that opportunity. It's not rushed. No it's slow motion and I've been listening to it myself and I'm learning how to be better at it. So enjoy the first couple of episodes We're and know sold. there's more to, there's more to come. Now let me ask you this because yeah. I saw that there's video of it. Yeah. But I thought this was a podcast, which is like radio, which to me, is. like you get to wear your sweats and yes. you have to be dressed <laughs> up. Well, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Well, if you want to watch it, you can. Oh. But I'm about listening too. Oh. Yeah. I like to have like earbuds in, yeah. and so and good. I've been I've been like relearning things as I listen to it again. So it's like you want to take okay. notes. I do, and I am. Can we tell people how to download it? Yeah. Yes. How do yes. you? Yes. Making <laughs> space with Hoda Copy. Yeah. Just go to just search Making Space with Hoda Copy on Apple's podcast, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, or you can use your smartphone camera. Oh, the QR code. Yeah, we always have that, right? You just scan it on your screen there. Do we have it? We should, yeah, it's right yeah. there. We should leave that it up for a few seconds. Yeah. So It'll take you right where you need to be. Thank you. Scan I love that. Thank gonna, you. It's going to be fun. I hope you all enjoy it. And let me know. And I'm going to take you jogging with me. And they may not something. be people you know. It's not like you that's why. Like, so who great. is that person? Yeah. You knew you yeah. knew Pastor yeah. Michael Todd, but that's different. I was in Tulsa. They're not all famous people. No. I hope you dig it. I hope you do. It's exciting. Coming up next on Today Talks, Al meets an educator who will make you feel inspired all day long. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today, Al is in Baltimore, shining a light on Maryland's Principal of the Year. Plus, a special surprise for some of her students. Take a look. We are back with our special series with NBC Sports once in a lifetime. Leading up to next February, Super Bowl and the Winter Olympics, both right here on NBC. We're bringing you heartwarming stories of people making huge differences in their communities. Yeah, well, this week, Al is in Baltimore where you got to watch the Ravens defeat the Chiefs. A really great game on NBC Sunday Night Football. And Al, where did you go? Uh -oh. from SUNY Oswego, a lean, mean weather machine. He's bringing the thunder. It's the Today Show's Al Roker. Yes, thank you. All right, woo. We are at the Ravens M&T Bank Stadium to honor one of Baltimore's finest principals. 
Dr. Taisha Swinton Buck of Digital Harbor High School. In fact, she just won Maryland's Principal of the Year. We're gonna meet her and her students in just a moment. But first, we wanna show you how Dr. Swinton Buck is leading her students with love, devotion, and TikTok. Rise and sparkle. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, good morning. Don't start no trouble this morning. And Sparkle is what Dr. Taisha Swinton Buck, principal of Digital Harbor High School, does best. Ms. Swinton Buck, she always greets her students with a lot of love. I feel like she has taken care of me like I'm actually her own daughter. Principal Swinton Buck is the best principal in the world. If you don't like her, I don't know what's wrong with you. Hey, Noah, I like that haircut. Zipping down the hallway with her trademark sparkly shoes and mask and portable music system. Any special requests? Yeah, I know I like the 90s. Posting TikToks, so many TikToks. If it's up, then it's up, then it's up, then it's up. Aye, aye, aye. Black, pick it up now, Kodak. Close, 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 close. Black, pick it up now. I know that people laugh about the TikToks, but kids get into that. And if I could draw you in that way, then by any means necessary, I'm going to do it. Let's go, let's go. Don't be late, be great. Since Dr. Swinton Buck became principal three years ago, Digital Harbor High has been setting records in attendance, grade performance, and graduation rates. I recognize that it's on me to research what this generation needs as learners, as well as just the whole child and their whole experience. Like a free barbershop for its students. That is something that really changed the scope of how our students show up, especially our young men. They also set up a free resource room stocked with personal care and household items that any student can get discreetly. If students' needs are not met in other places, that shows up in the classroom. And so I want to be able to bridge those gaps for students in any way that we need for them and their family so that they can show up as their best selves. And while talking about her students, she just beams. My kids are resilient, they are persistent, they are just, you know, a beacon of light for me. I love my students. <laughs> and it's clear they love her. Hey, you okay? Hey, Justin, you got to put your mask up. You feeling better? What happened? Even the teachers at Digital Harbor get emotional talking about her. She has the ability to bring out the best in each individual. She's everything that this school was meant to do when we set out to do it. Um, it's life changing. And lives are changing all around this school. Like for Duan Honeyblue, who Dr. Swinton Buck calls one of her comeback kids. It was a big difference on how it came from like bad grades to like failing classes to passing classes. Dewan now envisions a future working in real estate. He said, Dr. Swinton Buck, when I make it, I'm gonna make sure that I tell people, you made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, when I make it, I'm going to make sure people know that you were the person that helped me. The thing that meant so much to me about what he said was that he saw his success. Because when kids can see their success, that's the turning point for them. A turning point for students, a school, and a community. Inspired by a principal with sparkling shoes and a personality to match with a huge heart. Just a principal of the year for the great state of Maryland. And she has her sparkle shoes ready to roll. Please welcome Principal Taisha Swinton Buck and the fantastic students of Digital Harbor yeah. High School. Okay. Oh. Doctor, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling fantastic. When you, when you hear these kids talk about that, uh -huh. about how you've inspired them, and also your staff members, how you've inspired them. How does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel really good, really good. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. I'm just humble and grateful to stand in this moment with them and have this memory because they deserve it. Well, well, Dr. Swinton Buck, we want you and your students and your school to keep being a success story. So we have a little surprise for you. Are you ready? I think so. Okay, here we go. 
Every student at Digital Harbor High is getting a free Dell laptop. <laughs> and you get to keep this. And you guys get internet access for a year. That's right. Thank you so much. This is all provided by our parent company, Comcast. But hold on, there's more. Your school is getting 1,400 laptops, and Comcast is going to give away another 1,600 laptops to school programs throughout Baltimore. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. So, in all total, that's 3,000 computers. That's our so awesome. largest computer laptop giveaway wow, ever. Wow, thank what you is, so what much. What does this mean for your community? Oh, it means everything to us. At Digital Harbor High School, we're focused on technology. Um, computers kept us connected during the COVID closure, and so we're so happy that we can continue on trend. With Digital Harbor High School, technology, we're going to stay focused. Right, James? Yeah, we're gonna stay all right, how you guys stay feeling? Focused. And we want to mention again, the laptops and the internet service donated today come from NBC Universal's parent company, Comcast, and it, it's Internet Essentials program providing broadband internet service to eligible families and is part of the company's billion dollar commitment to digital equity. Dr. Swinton Black and all everybody at Digital High, thank you, at Digital Harbor, thank you so much for everything you. you're doing. Thank you it's so, so much. It's so nice to meet you. Thank and, you I, so and, and the twill is on point. Thank you. With the sparkling right. sneakers. We love it. <laughs> Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, what you missed from television's biggest night, the Emmys. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, it's National Queso Day. Bless Hoda reveals how she chose the first guest on her new podcast. Take a look. Welcome. How was your weekend? My weekend was great. What did you do? Do you know what we did yesterday? What? We went to Governor's Island. <gasps> you did it? I found the place we're going to camp out. Wait, did you go camping? We didn't camp out. Okay. But we okay. went there for the day yeah. and we did so, all the things. We rented. I love Governor's um, Island. The Those big bikes big for like bikes four for people. Big bikes for the whole family. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And Hal and Puppy sat in front Run. with little helmets. It's a brilliant, it by the way. It was so much fun. If you ever come to New York, Governor's Island, you literally go down to like the tip of Manhattan and you take a ferry, which is 10 minutes. Yes. And you're there. And you can spend the day it's riding not bikes. It's a process. No, it's amazing. It's easy, easy. And the kids got, there's so much for kids. We ate, we had a yeah, blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also had margaritas, which was a I good know sign where. for me. At the food truck? At trucks? the food truck, there's oh, a frozen margarita. Okay. But it is a big day. I'm going to toast a little margarita to you because you are launching 
something that I've seen you so passionate about, your new podcast. You know, uh, oh, stop it. No, stop. Okay, thank you. But anyway, you guys, this is so funny because this podcast, it's called Making Space uh, with me. But anyway, <laughs> It, it, who's, yeah, that's weird to your say your name. Your it's name. Like, yeah. it's like what we say, and Jenna. It yeah, kind of weird. But I just love a place where you can sit with someone and learn. And I feel like I have been, I almost feel selfish doing it because I feel like I'm learning all these life lessons. And as I'm talking, I'm like, this guy will say something and you're like, oh my God, that was so profound. I never <sighs> thought of it that way. Or someone's living their life and something pops up. But anyway, I, these are people you may not have heard of. But they have lived full, rich lives, and they are teachers. They don't even know they're teachers. They're teachers. But I mean, I've had I've, I interviewed a bunch of great people already. I have more coming up. Yes. I actually can't wait. And I, like we always say, we never watch our own show because it's a, you don't feel no. it just doesn't. You end up looking at your shirt critical. And thinking, like, you don't that like doesn't yourself. Look good. But listening to your to a yeah. podcast helps you realize, like, oh, I could have followed up there. Oh, oh, that was interesting. Or I love that part. Maybe I should have gone deeper. But I feel like I'm learning still, and it just reminds you, no matter how many years you've been doing something, yeah. there are a million things to learn. And I was like, I, like I'm, and I'm also already a million ways to fall in love, like to yes. look at your eyes spark yes. up when you're talking about yeah. this. Like it's, it's a fun. new passion. It's really fun to do. Oh, I'm so happy. I can't wait. So you guess what? The first two episodes they're already available. I was reading some of the comments this morning. Oh, people, I know you don't do that, but people are loving like it. it. Okay, this guy, this guy, this pastor. Yes. Pastor Michael Todd. He's from the Transformation Church in Oklahoma. So how'd you decide he was your first? I don't know. I loved him. I mean, there was something about him that just, he overcame incredible odds. Yes. He's all about like trying to correct his life. He sets intentions for his day. He's full of life lessons. So a few years ago, he set out, I love this. He has his wife of 10 years and four kids. He set out to date his wife. So we talked about making, uh, like writing down an intention, like your intention for today. Yeah. Like he said, some, some, some weeks it's just to tell the truth on everything. Some weeks his intention is to slow it down. Yeah. And you think about it. So I asked him where that idea came from. So take a look. Yes, yeah, so our, our intentionality came from, if you're married more than five years, you're not married to the same person you married. Like, and we got a, a revelation that you keep changing every five years and I needed to relearn who she was, what she used to like, she didn't like anymore. And so I would do certain things and I was like, man, that used to really work. Like that used to really get you going. Like what, what happened? And so we made an intentionality that I am not going to pause your growth on the frame that I remember you as. I'm oh going God. to keep learning you. That is Why so. Why did he stop talking? That was so much good stuff. I, but that is so profound Isn't because that? you think like, but when we first met, you were this. Yes. And what he's saying is, that isn't Re, how it's going like, to be. Like reintroduce yourself. Even if we just did that today, if that was our intention for this week, I'm going to reintroduce myself to my spouse or for some people to their best friend yeah. again. To like, this is me now. I used to be the one who always rode sidecar. Now I like to drive. Yeah. And you're like, oh, but I was always the one in charge in this, in this relationship. You're like, no, no, now I'm here. Uh. But I think all of it is cool. So anyway, and again, it, the first two are out, but I feel like there's so many cool ones coming up. So sometimes you listen, you'll say, I'm no. not sure if I click. That's okay. There's another one and you people might just click clicked. in. I'm telling you, people are clicking. So all you have to do, it's you can fun. just scan that QR code right there, yeah. that pink thing. Uh -huh. It's going to take you to Making Space with Hoda Copy. It's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. That I prefer that little purple button. That's how I find You just spot. search yeah. podcast yes. yeah. in your thing and then you search you. this. And it is going Thank to you. change I hope people's it's gonna lives. Be uh, I think it's been fun so far for me. It's awesome. All right. So did you stay up late? Did you watch the I movies? watched the first hour. You watched the opening act? Okay, that's good. What about good. you? Uh, I watched some of it. But again, I've watched a lot of it online because I kind of fell asleep. Yes. But the opening act, I mean, Cedric the Entertainer, LL Cool J, Rita Wilson. I mean, it was like watching a, what do you call, a flash mob, kind of. Yes. Should we turn it up a little? Can I we think listen we to a little? Okay, let's listen. It's Billy Porter. Wait, here's Rita Wilson rapping. Oh, they have so much TV. Plus TV, HBO Max, I got for free. And this rap wouldn't be complete. I gotta give a shout out to Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. So many characters I love, in fact. That's Burton Madness Business. We don't care about that. I 
Marie love Wilson. That. You know she can. You know she and can rap. So it's you just know it. It was so much fun to see everybody in the room. Oh my gosh! And they were having fun, and everyone got included. And it was oh, there was so much women empowerment, yeah. which I it was the theme of the night, didn't right? Like it that. felt like yeah, it. Yeah, it did. Today talks continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's just Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today All Day. <laughs> Don't you think the word exclusive is funny? Well, yeah, because we've never discussed it before, whatever we're discussing no. right so it makes here it and right now. By the way, this weekend, this past weekend, it's so funny because I went to Rehoboth to yes. see, uh, to visit with my mom. Me and the girls went this weekend. And then my sister is here with us now. It's so funny because you can get so lost in sprinting around yeah. and doing all the things. And I was talking with Karen and she said, we always have things to do, to do. And she said, why don't we try to focus on to be, like to be in the moment, to be of oh. service, to be there for somebody instead of to do, to do, to do. Because the to do list is long and you're always sprinting and you're never getting it done, never. And I like that whole I love to that. Be. Why don't we just be? and yeah. stop doing things yes. and try because we're well, we have all of our stuff but even if there is something you have to do you could still make it something more fun than you yeah, know i've got to get this list got to get a list 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 it's you know. so interesting because we had on on the show today mm -hmm. um dr H harold, harold Kopowitz, yeah, yeah who was talking his books right here but he was talking about how you choose to be as a parent mm -hmm. and i think we were we were kind of discussing it's like Instead of, and, and it's so funny because it's like, I think you can get stuck or I feel I like can. I can get yeah. stuck and think like, well, it's too late. Yeah. If this is how I am, this is, this how, is how I, I am. am. Yeah. But, or if this is how our house feels, which it could feel, you know, where you're the type that say, put your napkin in your lap yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, sit up and straight. And he said, don't do that. He said, let the little things go. Because if all you're doing is nitpicking, one, it's not going to be fun. Like the house isn't going to feel fun. Two, then when you have something you really got to say, maybe they don't hear it. And I liked how we said for two weeks, just lead with the things they're doing yes. right. You did very well with that. You know, and try that out to see. He said, just see how your child changes. Because I think, I, I mean, because sometimes I get in that whole, no, we can't do that. No, we can't. And instead of like you were saying, like acknowledge. Yes. That they acknowledge want the something. good and and well and exactly. And I think sometimes it's like I don't. I try not to give any screen time. Like we're really yeah. strict about it. But yeah. on the weekends they're allowed. Tons. So, but what was happening is they'd have a total melt when it was time to give it back. Yeah. So this <laughs> weekend I just was like, oh, I love before she even did it. This was like my wow. old teaching things. Wow. I love the way Mila's shutting down the iPad. She wasn't even shutting down the iPad. Oh, said that. It just it like work? started the, and then she's like, here, mommy. Cause it's like, everybody just wants to be acknowledged for good or acknowledged, maybe just acknowledged, you know, but, but you're if right. all you're acknowledged for is the meltdown. Stand up straight, not that dress. Why don't you, you got to stay on just, that. Do you Why have a lot? We didn't have a house like that. I don't. I, yeah, we didn't. I, we didn't either. I don't think I can't remember, but I don't think we did. Ours wasn't like the yeah. little things. I mean, yeah. there were big things, but they weren't like 
they sort of just allowed us to be. I mean, we were alone, I think, you yeah. know, too. Like, yeah. if we were having a melt, it was yeah. like, go to your room go and your we room. would do it. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, I, I think sometimes there are so many choices for kids and it's sort of like we're trying to rationalize. Yeah. And I found myself basically saying, do you want to take this or do you want to do that? All the things I used to think were so dumb I when know. I saw other people doing them. So now I'm trying to remember, like, stop doing it like you're yes. in charge. Yeah, we're in charge, we're right? We're in charge, Are yeah. we in charge? Mostly. Sometimes you forget. Was that worth it? That's it? No, probably not. Anyway, thanks for watching okay. this week of this episode of Today Talks. So it'll be more tomorrow. We'll do better, we promise. Yeah, yeah, it won't be so, you know, yeah. kid-focused. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for doing this. So good to see you. Me too, man. This is awesome, dude. Look at this vibe we got here. This, this is, is sort of your vibe matches the shirt, Dan. Like we've got it all going on for you here. It's <laughs> intentional, man. It's perfect. Thanks for having us, man. It's good to see you. I want people to know that you guys are in the middle of rehearsals for the tour and you flew here to New York, flying right back to Nashville to do this. So I cannot thank you enough. That's one part of it. Number two, I'm going to put the temperature at 103 in this greenhouse right now. <laughs> It's not the heat that gets you. You know, it's the humidity. <laughs> it's what they say. I read it in a book somewhere. It's so true. I want to thank you doubly for doing this. Of course. So Dan, tell me how rehearsals are going. I mean, you were out on tour for three shows, March of 2020. You're selling out Bridgestone in Nashville. It's about to explode. And then boom, everything stops. It's so crazy, man. I mean, you never expect that to happen. We work our entire lives for this. You know, it's a dream to get to the level. I mean, it's just such rarefied air to get to the place where we can do an arena tour. You know, we've had such great support from everyone around us, our team, our families, our friends, our fans, and you get there, we get a taste of it. Like we're all in. <laughs> I mean, we're looking at MSGs sold out, all these amazing bucket list venues. And all at once, I mean, the entire world shuts down. And it was just, it got to our heads a little bit, man. You know, if, I think everybody, I speak for the music industry, when, when I say it, it's like, we were all looking around, like, do we still have a career? Are we gonna be able to do this? You know, and uh, I, I think the first couple of weeks were sort of shell shock. I remember a lot of pacing around my yard, like just pulling weeds, <laughs> doing all kinds of like odd jobs, landscaping, you know, trying to stay busy. And then I think, you know, after a few weeks of that, it was like, man, we this is a crazy opportunity that we have. There's, you know, blessing in the sky, silver lining, not being on the road for a year and a half. Like, let's let's make the most of it. So we made an album and, and now here we are a year and a half later, like with a new album out to the fans. Uh, a couple singles that have gone up the chart, gone to number one, that we've not gotten to play live a single time, which is like, that's the craziest thing well, in the world. Because usually when you have a number one song, or you've got a song at the top of the charts, you're out there feeling it. It's a right. tangible energy from the fans singing it back to you every night. But we just, it's like, do people actually know this song? Is somebody, <laughs> is, is it, I don't know, is somebody playing a prank on us? But yeah. here we are in rehearsals, man, and it's going amazing. We're working new songs into the set, and I think, I, you know, speaking to our artist friends, speaking to everybody, crew, folks out there on the road, it's like the energy is high, fans are ready for it, we've waited long enough, and I think, you know, I, I think it just causes us to, to appreciate the moments a little bit more, you know, usually those rehearsal days are grueling, you know, you're in there at 7 a.m., you're working till past 7 p.m., it's just long, long days, but I think we're all looking around, enjoying it a little bit more, appreciating, you know, the people, the friends that we get to spend the time with, and and then it's all that much more worthwhile when we get out there and feel it on stage, man. We've gotten a few shows on our belts this summer and it's yeah. like, I get goosebumps even thinking about it. It's crazy. I had had a baby, our youngest, Ames, he was born two weeks before our Bridgestone shows, crazy. which was just kind of a, a wild thing anyway. And was kind of preparing myself to, you know, see what that looks like having a, a young child on the road. And that was the one big blessing in disguise for, for me and my family was just being able to actually be there. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of, I'm sure if we if we look, we can find a lot of positives. Uh, but at that point, it was just like, man, this is really a terrible situation for everybody. And uh, you know, as the time went on, I think it was a learning curve of everyone, everyone just being like, okay, we're in this. We have to figure this out and, and kind of settle in together. And there was a lot of time. I think the biggest helps were just the community that we have there in Nashville and being able to talk and the technology that we had. You know, being yeah. able to get on Zoom or whatever it was, and to be able to still write songs and to be able to kind of help each other cope, I think. And, you know, Dan and I were always constantly texting of, you know, what's going on? What, what are you doing? 300 like, days to yeah, our next yeah. show. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, I'm prepared. You know, a lot of people, it was like, you know, working remotely and a lot of people were figuring that out and what that looked like with their jobs. And we're just kind of like, there's, we don't have anything else besides this. You know, we can't get out on the road right now. We, we are forced to, to be in our homes. And for us, that was a, 
a difficult challenge because we're so used to go, go, go. And we're you know, preparing for tour and always kind of thinking about tour and can't wait to get out to our fans. And that was just like, all right, you, you have to wait and you have to take right. this time. And at first it was hard, but I feel like we definitely grew a lot in that moment. And I think we appreciated moments from our past even that we had never truly gotten to appreciate. You know, Dan and I would sit down and have talks for, you know, an hour of just being like, man, we, we do need to appreciate, you know, what we've already gotten to do because we are the luckiest guys in the world to have ever been given this opportunity because just to say that we were about to do arenas and then it was pulled out from under us, just being able to say that is incredible and, and realizing that there is, you know, you need to find the positive in that of, you know, thank God that we got here. You know, we actually made it and we're able to be able to sell out these arenas and the people want to come see us and that in itself is a huge blessing. And just very thankful to the you know, community that we had around us and our friends and our family for helping us get through that and, and figure out what life was gonna look like in those moments in this last year and a half. And I think Dan and I maybe took like two months off of, of quarantining ourselves and then we got back together and it was, I think that first song we wrote was I Should Probably Go To Bed and that was just yeah. kind of where it started right there. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You guys were very productive. You, okay, we're down now. We got to do something. So you, totally. you dig in on this album. You already had a couple uh, songs written and done, as you say. But what was that process like different from what it had been like in the past? You've been writing songs together for nine, almost 10 years, I guess. What was it like over Zoom? Is the process different? I mean, I think you're used to being in a room together playing and, and working it out. What was it like to put good things together? Yeah, man, there's nothing quite like the camaraderie, being in the room with your friends, feeling that energy. You get on an idea or a song or you write a chorus and everybody's like jumping up and down. <laughs> but, you know, it was a learning curve at first to get on, you know, on a FaceTime or a Zoom and, and try to write a song. But I feel like it was good for us. I feel like it caused us to go back to the basics, how we used yeah. to write songs, just sitting there with a pen and paper and an acoustic guitar and really diving in deep on the idea. Because on Zoom, it's like only one person's talking at once, you know, and one person's face pops up on the camera. So whenever you got an idea, it really you had to really bring it, you know. It was like all eyes on you versus being in a right. room. People are talking, there's music playing, it's you know, it's high energy. You can get away with saying something you might not. Yeah. No, nope, people said. just don't really react. Exactly. Like, okay, that one didn't land, but that, <laughs> it's like just you on the FaceTime and no one says something. It's pretty embarrassing. You got to gather your thoughts, man. So everybody was bringing their A game, and uh, man, I, I feel like we tapped into some of our best material just doing that. I mean, we were in our own world. You could put everybody on mute and kind of just dive in and focus on your own and be in your own space. And I think it was cool. And it was uh, then for us when we made the album and we recorded it, you know, luckily we've kind of always done that just on my laptop for better or for worse. I apologize <laughs> to the fans out there. I wish you guys would do it more pro. It's like, man, we just always did demos on my laptop. And that's kind of how we first got going. We were just two guys who love country music, moved to Nashville. We wanted to write country music, whatever that looked like, whether it was for ourselves or for other artists. and. We just did these demos, you know, whatever, playing whatever we could, just whatever guitar had a couple strings on it. And we would <laughs> put a demo down and then, you know, we started walking around town and people are like, we like these songs. Do you ever think about putting them out? And we're like, I mean, maybe, I guess. Do you have a band name? I, I'm, I guess Dan and Shay, you know, and that's kind of how that came about. But I think uh, the fact that we had done that for so long gave us an advantage in this time where we could just kind of camp out in a guest bedroom in my house. I had a mattress, I got videos of it on my phone, you know, it's like, 
mattress leaning against the wall. You know, I'm pulling dog blankets, you know, out of the closet, <laughs> laying them on the floor. Hey, Shay, can you hold this pillow over your head? <laughs> it's it's a perfect acoustic, you know. You would think at this point in our career, four albums in, I was yeah. like, I should get a proper studio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, could, I got the best singer in the world here, and he's like, you know, having to hold a pillow over his head to reflect the sound. So it was... Uh, it was funny, man. Some good behind the scenes content on that. But I, I think the fact that it's just the two of us in the room, I mean, putting our stamp on it, I think that, you know, by the time it gets to the fans, they feel it, it's genuine, it's authentic, and it's us. You know, it's nobody telling us what we should sound like, what we should say, what we should do. Whenever it gets to the fans, it's, I, I feel like that's why these fans have connected with this album. I mean, it's just, we left no stone unturned, man. We tried everything. You know, our fans deserve that. The people who have gotten us here, deserve that from us. It was like, if we had an idea, we thought it was good, how do we make it great? How do we mm. flip that idea on its head or take the production, which may have been this direction or may have been this style and change it up a million times until we know that it's right. So I think, you know, having all this time on our hands was just a bit of a silver lining to all of it. We really got to try everything and it felt like making a first album again. For, for, you know, it's like they say you have your whole life to make your first album. Then you got about two weeks to make every album right, after that. Right. <laughs> so it was like we never thought we would get that time to dig in again, and, and we did. And I feel like you know the music. We're so proud of it, man. It's uh, I think it's reflective of, of all the time that we spent on it. And you guys had such success with your last album three years ago with Tequila and and Speechless and all the hits that came off that. As you sat down for this album, did you feel like okay, we got some pressure on us now? People are gonna be waiting to see what we do next. Can we live up to that incredible monster hit? Absolutely. I'd like to say like, no, man, we didn't really even think about <laughs> it at all. Yeah. It was like, I mean, that's definitely staring you in the face. You yeah. know, when you have, and it's crazy to think that it has been three years, which I feel like in our minds, the last year and a half was kind of, we'll say two years since the record. Because yeah. that just was, that was a long time. It was an asterisk. Yeah, it was an asterisk. But it was, uh, man, it, it, there definitely was pressure, but it was good pressure. I feel like the more that you build your career and, you know, I think that that is just has to be the standard. That has to be the, the bar that you reach for. You know, you're not always going to have the tequilas and the speechless songs so the 10,000 hours but we've our fans have continued to to help us grow and we try to listen to them of you know being out on the road helps a ton which is why this last year and a half was very difficult because you're out there you're playing songs we didn't get to play I should probably go to bed after it went number one we still haven't gotten to do that at our show yet and uh, that was a crazy thing because you can feel the songs reacting as you're playing them live I mean you can feel it as it's going up the chart there's a direct correlation between totally. what's going on kind of you know on the radio and just overall all the socials you can feel it kind of in that moment so it was definitely a a bar as we were trying to reach and we'd had I guess you know three number one singles off this record already which was you know a, as we were writing it we had had I guess two you know at that point and it was like man we really have to make sure that we're bringing our A game because if you don't I mean we're gonna these are gonna be standouts it's yeah. like yeah they had a couple of hits on there and then it seems like they might have quit halfway <laughs> through I'm not really sure what happened there but it was uh, no but it, it was a good process because I feel like everyone felt the pressure in a good way it was more of a uh, of an excitement of like all right we have you know not having a bar would be a worse situation of yeah. like all right we have to figure out what a hit song sounds like we have to figure out what our fans are gonna like and we had that bar that we could reach for which is a huge help I think when you're writing an album we can look at and, and know what our fans are gonna wanna hear and, and then kind of just be able to be genuine with it of like, all right, let's just kind of shoot for the stars on this and do everything possible that we can do. And luckily, unlike our last album since I guess the first one, we had the time to do that. Like Dan said, you, you don't have the time to truly put together you know, an album like that. And there's so much that goes into it that people don't think about. And we were on the road and trying to prepare for that and making a good show. And there's so many, and we're very hands-on with that. So we're like trying to design a stage and design you know, a, a tour and everything. So we never really had time to truly dive into an album. So this was a uh, very uh, welcome, you know, I guess it wasn't so welcome. We obviously did not want to go off the road, right. but it was a, a nice surprise to be able to have you know, the time to be able to work on that and really dig in. And, Dan could spend two months on a kick drum sound and EQing one little <laughs> sound. You know? And we could do that with the songwriting process as well. And that was just, it was a lot of fun because it, it did remind me of kind of those early years whenever we weren't trying to think too much into or trying to get in there and write great music, you know, something that we connected with. Because I think at the core of it, you know, songs that your, your fans are going to like, I think from that, those early years, we weren't thinking about like, okay, what are we gonna, we're just writing stuff that we love. Right. And we're just like, we love this. We were bumping it in my car and like <laughs> blowing out the speakers in my Jeep at you know, two in the morning and just so excited about these songs that we had created and the magic that had happened since we got together. And I feel like that really translated on our first record and kind of continued you know, that. And we're able to do that, especially on this record of just being able to sit down and kind of tell stories and, and talk with our co-writers and really dig into those songs and make sure that it was, it was purposeful and not just, you know, all right, we're gonna, 
try to do an album now, we got a month, and here we go. And so we were able to really dig in on that and just make sure that everything was, was genuine in us. And it was just, it was a very, very fun process. And hopefully we don't have that much time again before we go out <laughs> on the road, but uh, it, was, it was a pretty awesome process for sure. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> That's your Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So, Dan, you produce this Good Things this record, right? And I understand you've got a checklist. Oh, yeah. As you go through, like, this is how we're going to make a great song. So what is your process when you're producing a record? Man, my brain is all over the place. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, social media, it's the live show, it's this, it's that, it's, you know, and uh, I think, you know, for my mental health, like, checklists have really helped me. And even as just mundane tasks, like, I know I'm going to make a coffee first thing in the morning. I know I'm going to make the bed. I know I'm going to go for a run. So I put those things on the checklist every day. It's a little redundant, but when I check those off, you know, at the end of the day, I can look back and be like, oh, maybe I did accomplish something, you know, because I think you can get caught in that cycle when you're making a record. You're yeah. just spending a lot of time on one thing, you know, EQing a guitar, or dialing a drum sound, whatever it may be. And you look back on the day and you're like, I didn't accomplish anything. And then you get in your own brain and you, you feel like you've, you know, slowed the process. But Having that checklist, you know, gives me just an objective thing to work towards every day. And I just went old school, man, analog, like how records were made back in the day. You know, you had the board and it was like drums, bass, guitars, acoustics, piano, lead vocals, background vocals, and all those things. Just, I think it allowed me to, uh, to simplify the album process a little bit because it's daunting to make an album. It's a lot of work, uh, you know, not only us, but our entire team. It's like, there's album art, there's, now there's all these different platforms. You have to deliver something different to everybody, and it's it's great. It's, you know, it means the music's getting out there, and it's nice that you know there are enough fans out there that are demanding the music. That you know we have, I don't know that that we can put different versions of songs yeah. and you know different videos out to different folks. But it's a lot of stuff. So I think you know at the beginning of the process it was like, all right, cool. Let's keep the focus. Let's let's draw this out. And I, you know, as it started going, as I was like checking away drums, all right, we're making progress here. We, we almost have an album. And it was, uh, yeah, I, I, it was such a good feeling. And it's never done. I know anything in the creative process, it's hard to say it's like, it's done. I, I always tell this story, but we had a song from the ground up on our second album. The song was released before the album came out. It went number one, country radio it was like double platinum, did its thing. And there were still like five little tweaks that I heard in there. I was like, ah, oh, it drives me crazy. So every time it would come on the radio, no one would ever hear it. It was like a little, like the smallest little edit in a breath and a vocal. I was like, it always drove me crazy. If I was in the car, I'd be, hey man, how's it? What's up? Is <laughs> you I'm like, dude, no one hears that. I, yeah, I could try here. to find, if you told me, find the things that bug me I, for a million dollars. I'd be like, I guess I'm not getting Honestly, that. when you're so deep in it, it drives you crazy. But now I could probably not even go back and find those right. things. You right. get far enough disconnected from it and you forget about it. But uh, you know that I went back after the album or after the song had gone number one, and I changed those things. So it was 
I got it right on the album, so I felt good about that. It was a sigh of relief. Um, so you're a perfectionist. Yes, yeah. to a fault. Yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah. to a fault. <laughs> Shay, do you have a checklist too, or you just get in and you let know, it rip with your vocals? You know, my checklist, I did it for about a day, and then I realized <laughs> that it was making me feel worse about the things that I wasn't doing. Because there's just like one thing, it's just like, get up. I was like, well, I, I kind of did that. I was staying there with the kids for like an hour. If I didn't could sing like this guy, I wouldn't need a checklist. <laughs> what know? Dan didn't know about his checklist is I'd sneak in there every other day and I'd just erase one little thing. Oh, yeah, it was right. Venmo didn't know that. <laughs> Venmo <laughs> share, like, I haven't done that. Okay. That's why he has to follow all the things on the board. So I just sneak things in there. Totally. Like, it would yeah. probably work. It, just, it would probably work. I must work. have written this. Okay. No, oh, I, I haven't done the checklist thing, but I. I do, uh, you know, I try to, to mentally do those things. I think it's a very good thing. I, Dan just, he does a lot more things than I do. And so like, it would just not feel as good for my checklist. I'm like, got up with the kids, heard screaming for an hour and a half, you know, like <laughs> ate breakfast kind of at 11, you know. But no, it's, it's awesome. And I, I love being able to see the process too for him. It's like watching that from, you know, the outside perspective of, you know, when we sing the vocals and as the process is happening, you know, I was going over to his house a lot. And I mean, every time I'd go back and this, this guy, I mean, it's like, the thing was just filling up, and I was like, we're gonna do this, dude, like it's gonna get done, and it was a really cool thing to, to see, and I feel like that's a, the checklist thing has definitely been a, a, a nice process to watch. Yeah, that's right, for sure. It was like not fully committal, though, it was dry erase, so at any point oh, I could be you like, wipe it off. oh, I, yes. no, I, the drums aren't right, I can, <laughs> so I, next time I need to like do it in permanent yeah, ink or something. Yeah, get you a you Sharpie know? for You the still have that, right? You still, still have rocking, that. yeah. And I was like, you gotta like, you have to put something over that, like it would be so easy for someone to trip, and then that part oh, of history is gone forever in a dry erase board. It got <laughs> tricky with a dry erase board. You like smudge it, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I was right. hovering. Some of the uh, the X's on the board are a little sloppy. So <laughs> yeah. I got to redo those ones, make those more perfect. This oh, yeah. is the perfectionist. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes. This is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, That's your shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. It's so interesting to hear you guys say that this process for this album was like going back to the beginning. Because I don't know if everybody knows, your fans do, but everybody knows the, your origin story, we'll call it, which is this now famous meeting at a house party in December of <laughs> oh. 2012 in Nashville. And then going back to your house where there was like a, tr uh, a fort of some kind in the living room. <laughs> it's probably a better way to put it. Yeah, or whatever that was. Tent. So what do you remember about that night, Dan, that really Man. led to all this? It's just the 10 year, you know, it's been 10 years since I moved to Nashville, which is crazy, time flies. But I mean, moved to Nashville, loved country music, had a dream, didn't have any money to my name, you know, graduated college, all my friends went off and they were working jobs, making great livings, you know, establishing a career. And I'm like, I'm gonna go try to write songs and got, I had no money, it was like, found this house, had a buddy that I knew through a mutual friend who ended up becoming one of our best friends. and. He's written, I think he wrote four songs on this album, so we've stayed friends ever since. And uh, man, it was just anything we could do to get by. And we had this house, we found it, it was like a hundred bucks a month in rent, which you, I don't know, you can't well, even get a meal for that. I'm sure I City. lived in that neighborhood at some yeah, point. Yeah, Barry Hill, man. Which okay. Barry Hill, yeah. 10 years later, has come up. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. cool restaurants, cool bars. Sure. Not at the time, not, it was, no, not uh, 10 years it was ago. a little suspect. Yeah. But 
found this house and the heat didn't work, the AC didn't work, the locks didn't work on the door. It was like a folded plexiglass <laughs> thing you could reach in. That's all you've got in the house. It, it is, the but the, the keg in the back worked. There was a keg <laughs> that, that somebody <laughs> left over, probably a previous tenant. A keg of PBR was probably growing things on the surface, but hey, we were drinking it anyway. You had the important things covered. Exactly. The keg worked. Things were definitely yeah. I, I think the first time, so I came in, my, my friend Andrew, that I think I was living with actually at the time I was, I think I was staying on his couch, uh, my buddy Brandon's couch. We all lived kind of together in this thing. And he was like, there's these, these two guys that are, uh, they're having a house party tonight, a mutual friends of, of Dan and, uh, and our friend Andy, who he was talking about earlier. And he was like, let's go to this house party. He's like, you know, they got a house over here in Berry Hill and, and they have a keg. And I'm like, I'm in. I didn't even need to know the details. I was like, I don't need to know their character. Like they have a keg, like I'm down, let's go. And none of us had any money. You know, it was like anytime there were going to be free drinks involved, we're like, I think we should really seize the moment here, guys. I think we need to do this. Sure, we haven't slept in a week. Let's go to this, yeah. this party. And uh, it was crazy. I, I walked in, and I remember getting to the house thinking, I don't know if I'm in the right house or not, because I got to the front door, and I, the door was kind of like locked. And so I reached inside. The window was kind of did like this. And I reached in there, and I was like, this is either going to be a great time, or I'm breaking and entering, and I'm going to jail. Yeah. And at that point, for the keg, I was willing to risk it all, really. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going in. And so we went in there, and I remember you know, Dan and Andy and our, our guitar player now, Justin, was there at this party. And uh, it was just a... It was a great time. I think we ended up staying up till probably 2 a.m. And there was a moment where everybody was passing around the guitar and kind of playing their songs. And I was like, I'd like to take a crack at that. You wouldn't believe it. This guy hadn't said a word the entire night. Which <laughs> I, was I, know busy, I was too busy back at the keg. I was he, it's completely quiet. And everybody's passing the guitar around Nashville style in this tent. We, we overlooked that detail. Yes, that's right. The we tent is in the living dude, room. I mean, we went to this place called Music City Thrift just down the road from where we live. We bought like $6 worth of sheets. We tented it out. I mean, it was the only way we could stay warm. We had a little space heater. We huddled around wow. it, wrote songs, whatever it took. And when he walked into the tent, he's completely quiet, like chilling, like this shy little guy hanging out. <laughs> shy guy. Yeah, <laughs> which I found out later is not the case. Yeah. You see. We're all singing, and then it's like 2 in the morning. He's like, can I try one? And he starts singing, and I, I was like, everyone was like, oh, my gosh. This is the best, it was the best singer I ever heard in my life. Pulled out my phone. I still have the voice memo of this, and I, like, held it up. I didn't know what would come of this. You know, I didn't ever expect to be sitting here talking to you in New York City and all these crazy accolades behind us. But I recorded him, I was like, and I labeled it best singer ever. It was December 7, <laughs> 2012. Right? Wow. Crazy. Still, he was doing a cover. And uh, the next day, I was just like, we need to write songs. Like, we had both been chasing this dream separately, obviously, without much success. We wrote the next morning. I think it was like 7 a.m. Yeah. Don't know why. I think we were still up from the night before. Yeah. I would couple. say the next day, but I think it was that morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the right. same day. Probably a better way to describe it. We wrote, we wrote two songs that day, and honestly, we haven't stopped. It was, it was insane. I mean, the first song we wrote, wrote got put on hold by a major artist, and it was like, man, up to that point, we couldn't get anyone to respond to an email or, you know, take a meeting with us. We were sneaking into the CMT <laughs> awards. We were doing all this madness, and then uh, from there, it was just like it happened. It was like it was meant to be, and. I, one of the craziest stories about this is we didn't realize this till like a few weeks after we met. Shay had lived in Pittsburgh, like I don't know, yeah. less than a mile from where I grew up. We didn't know each other. Oh wow! Like, yeah, you went up it's there. Pretty insane, man. I mean, it was like I was describing like where I was like, yeah, I lived in Pittsburgh for a second. He was like, where at? Well, where at? And yeah. I was like, well, I was over here. It was like near Allison Park and all these places. And he was just like, yeah. He's like, that's where I grew up, yeah. like a mile. And that's it was just wild. kind of a crazy, like, And how long whoa. were you there? I was there for about a year. Okay. About a year or a year and a half. Honestly, I don't, I'm not great with time yeah. nowadays. <laughs> really. Could have been seven years. I don't know. <laughs> but I was there for about a year, and uh, I just remembered, like, discovering that and thinking, like, wow, that's probably, we were probably there at the same yeah. time. And you think about those things, man. You look back, and you're just like, you know, those moments, thinking back to that house party, you never think that those are the moments that are going to kind of change your life. I mean, if there was one pivotal moment, I mean, that was it meeting Dan there in that house party, and I was just thinking that I was going to go for some free beer. So the moral of the story is always go to, go the, to the party. Yes. If guys. there's free beer, always go to the party. If you're in Nashville, you got to go. Your life you philosophy go. really paid off. It did. Yeah. Okay, last question before I get you out of the greenhouse. Was there ever any consideration at the beginning of being Shay and Dan rather than oh, Dan yeah. and Shay? Dude, it's, it's a great question. I, yeah. I, I don't know how the name came about. It was always just like we never set out to be a band. We were just two best friends writing songs. We would walk into a place like a publishing, you know, somewhere that we were trying to get a free meal. Hey, man, you want to take us out for lunch or a beer? Like, oh, yeah, you've got a company card. Let's go. Dan and Shay are Dan here. And Shay are here. Oh, Dan and Shay are here. It was just like that was the way it went. But now that I analyze it in reverse, it was like maybe it was because if it was Shay and Dan, the word and ends with a D and then Dan starts with a D. So there's a little bit of gray area due to Shay and Dan. You got to uh, like, it's, it's a little more difficult to say. It doesn't roll off the tongue as much having the 
D of Ann and the D of Dan back to back. We have a Dan whole chart written out if you really want to thought see about it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Though? We really dove into this. He's another got another one of your checklist. Yeah, he's got another checklist. On the other side of that is is a reasoning. <laughs> It, it also Shay and Dan just sounds a little silly. I think it's a see exactly. That, you you yeah. tied the two letters, the Shay two Dan. D's there together. Shay, Shay and Dan. You're right. It's basically, like because there was weird. Shannon Doe was already a band, so Dan and Shay was. It was everyone just called us Dan and yeah. Shay, and it was just kind of went from there. And also we had had a couple band names that were absolutely atrocious that we will not talk about in front of the country, Willie. Come on. And uh, Come on. there just was I'll say away. one because it wasn't our idea. My my lawyer one time like early on we had did this showcase thing, and he wrote down this thing thinking like had an aha moment of like guys. <laughs> you might want to get over here because this is about to be. It took him ten minutes changing. to type it on his iPad. It was too. it was kind of a peck situation where like and it, he clearly I mean it looked like he was writing a one thousand page document and he was just <laughs> writing this thing out and he has this big reveal and he kind of does this with the iPad and we're sitting there we're like oh, like things are about this to heat up it. dude this is like this is our future welcome you know and he flips it around and it says school's out <laughs> and Dan and I we're just like oh. you know I mean you should have seen the look on our faces we didn't He's know how to react. That day. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> He was, uh, yeah, so Schools Out did not make the Ooh. cut. Dan and Shay, history was made. That's, That's right. Great. Guys, thank you so much for doing this and for coming all the way from Nashville and sitting here with us on a hot Dude. summer day. You're the best. Thank you for taking thank the time, you. man. So hey, today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite ways to use up any oats that you have lying around. First up, she's baking an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Then it's homemade granola with a savory twist. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of. Personally, speaking for myself, I will opt for chocolate every single time. I know you have a little canister of oats sitting at the back of your pantry that maybe you're neglecting a little bit. But instead of teaching you how to make a traditional bowl of oatmeal, which I already know you know how to make, I'm going to show you how to hashtag upgrade your oats. Today we're going to be making my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with some added fun, coconut, and then a really easy savory granola. How's that for a plot twist? Let's get started. Oats. They are having a moment. They're everywhere these days, and for good reason. Oats are super versatile, they're really nutritious, and there's so much you can do with an oat to make it a star. But there are a lot of different varieties, so I thought I'd walk you through a few of my favorites. Welcome to my kitchen classroom. On today's agenda, Oats 101. These little guys are oat groats. I know, it's not the cutest name, but these are oats in their least processed form. They have a lot of fiber and these are what they look like before they've been rolled out. They do take a bit longer to cook though, about 30 to 40 minutes, but they have a really nice nutty and chewy texture, which I find is really nice for a salad, similar to a barley or a farro. Next up, we've got my steel cut oats. These are simply oat groats that have been cut into this pinhead shape. Now, steel cut oats take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook, They've got a nice chewy texture, making it perfect for a slow weekend morning when you want to enjoy a bowl of oatmeal. Next up, we have got my oat MVP, rolled oats or old fashioned oats. These oats have been steamed and then rolled out into that iconic oat shape. These take only 10 to 20 minutes to cook, not too long, not too short, but they also have this really nice springy light texture without being too chewy. I find that old-fashioned oats are perfect for just about anything. An oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, some granola. I use them so much in my kitchen. And finally, we have our instant oatmeal. These are the most processed form of oats from our little lineup here, and what you commonly find in a little brown packet destined for your microwave. These are very mushy in texture, so I don't really cook with them or bake with them, but if you only have about one to three minutes in the morning to cook them, these are the oats for you. I won't judge you if you use them. When you're always stocked with oats, guess what you'll never run out of? Oat milk. Because that's right, you can make it yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you need to make your own oat milk at home is some old fashioned oats, some cold water, and a good quality nut milk bag. When you're making your own oat milk, make sure to use old fashioned oats. Steel cut is gonna be a little bit too coarse and instant is gonna be too mushy. So we don't wanna do that. Now, I'm just gonna grab a measuring cup for my old fashioned oats and measure some out. 
Old Fashioned Oats Secured. My blender is my BFF, and this oat milk comes together just in your blender. I'm gonna add my Old Fashioned Oats to my blender. We've got some cold water, make sure it's cold. We don't want any warm water here because the oats will get slimy. Nobody likes a slimy oat milk. Adding this in my blender. And finally, this is optional, but not if you're me, because I like a little touch of sweetness, a little bit of maple syrup. You can totally use a couple medjool dates too if you'd prefer. Just a touch. You can even add a little dash of cinnamon too if you're feeling like you want to live on the edge today with your oat milk. Now, all I'm going to do is blend it. Only 30 to 40 seconds. We don't want to over blend it because the oats will get kind of mushy. Okay, here we go. Oat milk is in our future. We're looking nice and creamy. Now, before I remove this from the blender, just want to show you. You can totally use a cheesecloth to strain, but I'm using a nut milk bag because it's a lot easier. I'm gonna prepare this in my pitcher. Now I'm just gonna pour in my oat milk. We're making oat milk. You just wanna squeeze it a little bit so you get all of that oat milk out. This is precious, we worked hard for this. Okay, we didn't really work that hard for this, but we still wanna get everything out. Look at how creamy that looks too. Like that's some thick oat milk, I love it. And look at how this nut milk bag is catching all of those little pieces of oats. We don't want that in our oat milk. We want that to stay secure in the bag. That's why it's nice to get a good quality nut milk bag, because then it makes it super easy to make your oat milk at home. All right, we're gonna set this aside. See you later. And now we have homemade, creamy, delicious oat milk. This stores well in the fridge for about five days. Make sure you stir it before you drink it because separation is totally normal. I like to use this oat milk in any recipe where I call for a non-dairy milk, whether that be in my chocolate chip cookie pie or even my date crumble bars. So delicious, so creamy. It's even amazing in your coffee. And you know what pairs really well with oat milk? Cookies. Luckily, I've got myself covered because we're gonna make my chocolate chip oatmeal cookies with a little bit of coconut. I'm gonna let this chill while I go grab the ingredients. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Oh, we're celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I have been there and done that with traditional stovetop oatmeal and overnight oats. Plus, I would choose a cookie over those two any day. So, to solve my persistent desire for cookies at all hours of the day, I'm going to show you how to make my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's wholesome enough to eat for breakfast. So, let's get to it. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees, and because I love being prepared, I have also lined my pan with some parchment paper. Now, we're going to get to work on the wet ingredients. I'm going to crack my egg in my bowl. 
twist that really nicely. We want no separation between the yolks and the whites. Okay. This looks great. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. Mixing the egg and the almond butter together really well. All right, this looks smooth and creamy. Now I'm going in with my melted and cooled coconut oil. Straight in there. We are actually going to be adding some shredded coconut into these cookies, so I find that the coconut oil really complements that super well. It's also a nice butter replacement in these cookies too. Mixing everything together. Everyone needs to become friendly. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. Can't have my cookies without it. And finally, for my sweeteners, maple going in. Maple adds that really warm and almost breakfasty taste to these cookies. And then we're adding some coconut sugar. Coconut sugar and maple syrup are my favorite sweeteners to use together. I find that they complement each other really well. They create this really golden taste in these cookies. Because coconut sugar is really fragrant, it's gonna go really nicely with that coconut oil and that shredded coconut that we're gonna be adding into the cookies later. My wet mixture looks perfect, honestly. I have to give credit to myself. Now, I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. For these cookies, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. If you don't know what oat flour is, get ready to have your mind blown. All it is, is just oats ground up into a blender until you get that fine powder, like a flour. Then we get oat flour. How fun and convenient is that? Easy to make at home, you can also buy it from the store. Oat flour going in. We're having an oat moment with these cookies. We love oats. Gonna also add some almond flour. Almond flour is really dense, oat flour is really light, so I find that they create a really nice combination and a really nice texture in these cookies. Okay, we're gonna whisk that up. Whisking our almond flour and our oat flour together really nicely. And now, because I'm fun, I'm gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you buy unsweetened shredded coconut because we've got the sugar already, we don't need to add more into our coconut. Now, for our star, these would not be oatmeal chocolate chip cookies without some oats. So, I'm using old-fashioned or rolled oats here. Oats going in. Time for a little baking powder. And a little pinch of salt. The salt is gonna balance out the sweetness, really bring it out, it's gonna heighten all of those flavors. Whisking everything together nicely, we want a fully incorporated dry ingredient mixture here. Dry mixture taking a journey. Beautiful. I'm gonna fold my dry and wet ingredients together until everyone is fully incorporated. So we wanna make sure we're not seeing any remnants of that flour mixture, right? We want it to be fully incorporated. We'll see how that color changes. Everyone looks really nicely incorporated, really well mixed, thorough. We wanna do a thorough job here. I mean, listen, this is like this is like a bowl of oatmeal, right? This counts, a cookie, an oatmeal cookie, same thing. Same thing. I think it's the same thing. Okay, this is controversial. I'm gonna put my spatula down for this. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of, personally, speaking for myself. Um, I will opt for chocolate every single time. So, I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. I measure chocolate chips with my sole, as you can see. I will be saving these to top the cookies with before they go into the oven. I want a few more. I changed my mind. Just a few. Breakfast, anyone? <laughs> okay, we're gonna fold the chocolate in really nicely. 
And this is a beautiful cookie dough situation I've got here. Okay. Time to make our cookies. Perfect. I'm using a cookie scoop here just to get some nice even cookies. Want them all to be about the same size and then they're gonna cook evenly too. That is a huge chunk of chocolate chips I just got. I'm not mad about it at all. Okay. And I'm just gonna use my fingers just to flatten them down slightly. Not too much, just a little. This one has so many chocolate chips, that's the one I'm going for. I already know this. I've already made up my mind. I like making these cookies at the start of the week because I'm eating them for breakfast. It's kind of nice to have on hand. And even if you have a different breakfast, okay? Even if you're having your eggs or whatever else you eat for breakfast, you can totally have one of these after with a little cup of coffee. How does that sound? Pretty good? I know, because I do it all the time. You know what these remind me of also? Just like a really glam granola bar. Like a granola bar, but like make it a cookie. I've got some extra dough here. I will be baking these off later, but I do want to add a couple extra chocolate chips on top for fun. I went pretty heavy on the chocolate chips and the dough already. And I honestly love that for me. I'm gonna bake these in the oven 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden brown around those edges. I'm so excited to have some oatmeal breakfast cookies after this. of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Cookies for breakfast, anyone? I mean, look at how textured they are, right? They've got the oats, they've got the chocolate chips, they've got coconut. There's a lot going on here. Perfect for breakfast, but also for any time of the day. I'm not gonna you know, say that I can't have this after dinner, because I can. So excited to eat them. And you know what I'm gonna eat them with? Some homemade oat milk, because I'm having an oat moment today. And I'm just gonna have all of the oats. I mean, look at that. So fluffy. 
You know what this needs? You know what this needs? It needs to be dunked in some oat milk. It just has to happen. Okay. I gotta get my camera out first because this is a perfect photo op. All right, it's taking the plunge. <sighs> oh my God, okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm so good, I'm just losing cookies everywhere. Okay, I need a sip of oat milk. You might, and no disrespect to your bowl of oatmeal, but you might want to abandon it after you try these cookies. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm being honest, I'm being honest. I'm going in for more. Mmm. Someone hold me back. No, really, someone hold me back. Oh, you thought I was done helping you upgrade your oats? Well, you are mistaken because up next, I have my plot twist savory granola. I'm super excited to make it. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready, are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. When you think of granola, you're probably thinking of those sweet clusters of nuts and oats to top your yogurt. But have you ever thought about a savory version? I know it's a plot twist, but savory granola is one of my favorite snacks. I was inspired to make it by traditional Indian snack mixes, and I cannot wait for you to try it. We want the savory granola to have lots of flavor, so to start, we're gonna make a little olive oil spice mixture. In my bowl, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil, Olive oil is gonna help us get that nice, crisp, golden color and texture that we really want. Now, for some more flavor, I'm gonna add some coconut aminos. Coconut aminos going straight in there. Coconut aminos are made from the sap of coconut palms, and it's actually very similar in taste to a soy sauce, but it's gluten-free, so if that's important to you, there you go. We always have to have spice. I always have to have spice. I can't live my life without it. So we're gonna add a couple of my favorites. Cayenne. Cayenne is gonna add some heat, some spice. It's gonna really kick this flavor up a notch. Now I'm gonna add some garam masala. The garam masala is a very common Indian spice blend. It contains pepper, cumin, cloves. It's super warming, super fragrant. I love using it in my savory granola. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. Nothing is complete without a little pinch of salt. And now because we have a lot of spice, a lot of flavor, a lot of savory elements going on here, I wanna add a little bit of honey just to balance out that saltiness. I love honey. Just a touch, not too much. That honey is gonna give that really nice, sweet and salty balance that I love so much. 
Now let's whisk everything together. Make sure it's really well incorporated. We want all of the spice, all of the flavor to be evenly, evenly whisked together. It's pretty potent. <laughs> all right, this is nice and well mixed. Now I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. I like using a variety of nuts and seeds here because it's really fun to play with different texture and flavor. Every single nut and seed has a different flavor profile, so it's fun to add them all together and just have a little crunch, a little texture, something different in every bite. So, I'm gonna start with my sliced almonds. I use almonds so much in my kitchen, from almond butter to raw almonds. They're super versatile and I just love the taste. I'm gonna add some raw cashews, super buttery and delicious. Now, we're gonna go for some pecans. Pecan, pecan. I say pecan. In there. I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds. You can add sunflower seeds here too if pumpkin's not your jam. Pumpkin seeds add that nice green color too. It's kind of pretty. Okay, now we're gonna add some sesame seeds. These are gonna be so delicious when they're nice and toasty in the oven. Mm, I love it. Now, this wouldn't be granola without oats. You cannot have granola without our oats. Adding the oats straight into my mixture. Now we mix them all together. Make sure that you're using raw, unsalted nuts here. We are gonna be roasting them in the oven with some olive oil and spices, so you don't need to buy roasted and salted nuts. Look at how fun and textured this is. So many different colors. And it's about to get a lot of flavor. Time to add my olive oil mixture straight on top of my nuts, seeds, and oats. Leave no spice left behind. Come on, you can do it. Okay. Now we're gonna mix everything together. We want a very well-spiced, savory granola. So every piece has to be coated by some olive oil and spice. It already starts to smell so good, so flavorful. This is such a fun and easy portable snack too. We are looking nice and well mixed. Now it's time for the pan. Make sure you get all of those little resistant oats. They'll have a better life as savory granola. Okay, make sure that you're spreading your granola out really well, really evenly. We want everyone to have personal space, some room to breathe. This way we can ensure a nice and even crisp bake. We are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake this 45 to 50 minutes at 325 degrees in the oven. Make sure you toss it every 10 minutes or so to ensure that it gets nice and golden brown. Look at my gorgeous golden savory granola. I've let this cool completely. Make sure you let it cool for at least 15 minutes. First of all, it's a little bit too hot to handle as it comes out of the oven. And when you cool granola, it crisps up as it cools. I'm gonna store this in my cute little container, which I promise I can get the lid off because I'm strong. There we go. I love to store these in little mason jars or little jars like this, just so it's nice to have a snack on hand. So the next time you are craving a potato chip or a cracker, this is just a more unique and fun savory snack to snack on. You've got a lot of different flavors. You can customize it with your favorite nuts and seeds as well. So whatever you have in the pantry, you've got some sunflower seeds, you've got some walnuts, feel free to sub that in. Look at that nice golden color. So good. I've got most of my savory granola into my little jar. And you know what I also like to do with this? I like to put it on a salad. Think of this as the fun cousin to your croutons. Yeah, they're your, your crouton cousins. Crunchy, savory, really pretty. You've got those nuts and seeds and you've also got a lot of flavor there. Look how nice that looks. This is a super simple salad. I just did a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper. This granola though, 
It adds a secret touch. Mmm! It's so good. It's so salty, but it's got heat and flavor. Wait, I need more. Like, you've got so many things going on, right? Different nuts and seeds. Gives it a lot more texture, makes it more interesting to eat. You've got something new in every bite. I mean, have you ever seen a salad topped with granola before? I think I have to document it. I mean, look at that, it looks so pretty. Croutons? I don't know you. I mean, come on. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Sweet granola, I'm coming for you. I hope this has inspired you to upgrade your oats. If you're neglecting them in your pantry, let them live, let them live as savory granola, as some delicious oatmeal cookies. Oats are really an MVP. We are excited for our next guest because he is an eight-time Grammy award-winning artist who also won an Emmy in 2013 for Outstanding Original Song in a Children's Program. Ziggy Marley is part of the music dynasty started by his father, Bob Marley, one of the pioneers of reggae music. And if that's not enough, Ziggy, also an accomplished children's author, and he's here today to tell us about his latest book, Ziggy Marley. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Here's the thing. I mean, people know you as a very successful musician, part of reggae royalty. How did Ziggy get into writing children's books? Oh, I have, I have um, seven kids, uh, four <laughs> young ones. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. And um, I mean, it's an extension of songwriting. I, I always love writing. And so, you know, it's just an extension of, of, of writing songs. I love it. I love it. And your, your new book is called My Dog Romeo. It started, uh, it's a story based off of a dog that you actually got during the pandemic. So first, tell us more about your dog and why you wanted to turn this into a book. All right. So my kids, they always wanted a dog, you know, for years now. And my wife was very, very reluctant about it. Um, she was like, oh, the, the dog is going to be like another baby and, <laughs> you know, and so forth. So right before the pandemic hit, we got a dog, a puppy. Um, he's a legato, he's an Italian water dog. And the pandemic hit and we were home together with the dog for the whole year. And, you know, things like that, in, like animals inspire me, dogs inspire me, you know, birds, nature inspire me. So I wrote a song um, about the dog and it's on my latest album, which is a kid's album called More Family Time. And we kind of took, took the song and turned it into a, a, a kid's book. And then you've got another kid's book coming out. This one's called Little John Crow. And you say this is yeah. a book that's really an extension of your own childhood. How so? So when I was growing up in Jamaica, we grew up around, we call them John Crow. Um, they're turkey vultures. And um, we always, as a kid, I used to look on them as very, like, scary, scary creatures. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't like them. You know, it would be like John, vultures, John Crows are... The stories we would hear as children were really scary. But as I grew up, I realized that these animals are, are very um, important to our ecosystem. Uh -huh. And so this book kind of goes through that kind of, uh, of um, storyline where this vulture really doesn't want to be a vulture because vultures are seen as dirty and nasty and evil. But, and, but then he accepts himself as a vulture. And just like I accepted um, the importance of the vulture. So in the book, this character accepts himself as a vulture and finally fulfills his destiny. Wow. <laughs> I love that. That's, that's a just, deep children's that book is too. deep and brought to you by nature. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I want I want to talk about your dad and music. You know, your father uh, was a music music legend in the industry, and very instrumental in your career. So, what would you say was the best and and most impactful advice that that he's given you that you've carried with you throughout the years? I think um, both my parents, really, um, my mother and my father, um, led a life that is not, for me, I didn't learn about things by words or by them telling me things, but by watching them and, be, and them being an example. So mm -hmm. 
we learn that um, we have to help each other. Um, we learn about the ideas of unity and love and spirituality. And that really has had an impact on me in all my life and my songs and everything. It's coming from that kind of foundation. Mm-hmm. Ziggy, I mean, you've got these, these two children's books coming out. Does that mean we can expect a new album to drop soon? Yeah, music always coming out. Um, you know, <laughs> we're doing a lot of singles, singles nowadays. But yeah, music is always creativity. It's just, it's always there. So you can expect something, you know, every now and again, we drop a single and maybe an album um, later this year. Yeah, tis the new model. Singles, yeah, not singles. albums. Uh, Ziggy Marley, <laughs> yeah. thanks for waking up so early, Ziggy. Thank you, thank you. Always a treat. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> <bad. Bad>. <laughs> The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. (laughs) Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. There's a brand new children's book on the shelf, and it happens to be written by one of our friends, Mark Shriver. It is called 10 Hidden Heroes, and it teaches kids to count while it also teaches them about everyday heroes that are hidden on each page. And it was inspired by Mark's career as president of the Save the Children Network. Hi, Mark, Mark, we love you already. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you, well, partly because we love your, your sister Maria, but, but we love how your whole family has always been of service, Mark. Maria once told me, she said, we never took vacations as kids. Every trip we took was one of service. Is that how you remember it? I think we had a little bit of fun along the way, but it was definitely, service was definitely interspersed in all of those activities. So yes, we definitely were exposed in, to all the different activities in a, in a country. And we did service when we visited a foreign country, but we also had some fun. You know, Mark, this book is so cool, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's coming at the perfect yes. time. You know, finally, I think we're paying attention to those that lift up our country. Uh, this last year has taught us that. And I got to count with my kids yeah. and find, you know, in a world where's Waldo type way, some yeah. of these awesome people. And it really starts conversations. That's so great to hear, Jenna. Thank you. Uh, That was exactly what the book was designed to do. It's to see the hidden heroes, what Pope Francis calls uh, the hidden saints next door, Mm -hmm. who are doing these wonderful things in our community and don't get lifted up uh, very often. Uh, So much in American culture, we focus on, you know, the Super Bowl winning quarterback, the CEO has a lot of money, uh, the movie star. But I think what we really should focus on are the people who are doing great things Uh, good things every day. Um, And that's what the book is supposed to do. It's supposed to spur conversations between adults and little children and hopefully be a learning experience and a fun experience for both um, readers and little kids. Well, it's such a cool concept. And by the way, the illustrations that we're looking at right now are amazing. Who is the illustrator on this one? Uh, Laura Watson. She is uh, from Canada. Um, it's, we made the decision, you know, in May, June of last year, right in the height of COVID, uh, and our children were home, two of them were home from college. Our third child is in high school, and Jeannie and our, all five of us took a secret ballot on our favorite uh, illustrator. We had a couple to choose from, and Laura was number one in all of our secret ballots. So it was a, it was a family process, and the kids helped uh, identify some of the heroes in the pages. And Jeannie wrote some of the uh, refrains. So it was a really uh, family-oriented project, a lot of fun. 
we're hoping that it spurs lots of great conversations and lots of fun journeys. You know what's funny? Jen and I have this conversation a lot. We talk about wanting our children to be of service, and this is a good starting point. Obviously, this book, you're watching people just serve their neighbors. But how did you teach your kids about the importance of service? Like, what did you do on a daily basis so that became part of their life? I think little kids, uh, you know, soak up what their parents uh, do, and they soak it up when your par the parents are happy and joyful. And I think if they see you doing things of service to others, whether it's cleaning up the dishes after dinner, whether it's doing something on the weekend for the homeless, for those that are hungry, I, I think these gestures add up, and kids see that, and they see that you're happy doing it, and you're joyful doing it, and they're gonna start following you. I mean, my mother and father, um, I don't think ever lectured us on service, but I knew that they went to work every day. I knew my father had great admiration for Peace Corps volunteers. He started that program. My mother was Special Olympics athletes. Uh, she started that program and great admiration for Special Olympic parents. Those were the heroes that were discussed in our household. And I know that when I saw them get up and want to go to work every day and be happy and excited about that, uh, just kind of fell in line for us. And I hope my wife, Jeannie, and I are doing the same thing well, for our kids. You are. Just exposing them. <laughs> You're definitely doing it by this book, but also with your work with Save the Children. I've gotten to meet you through that awesome organization. How does this book yes. tie into that work? Save the Children, uh, Jenna, as you know, spends a lot of time focused uh, in rural America, rural poverty, kids that are struggling uh, academically, and little children, zero to six years of age. If kids enter kindergarten ready to learn, uh, they're going to grow. Uh, and they're gonna succeed in school and beyond. Uh, so we focus on those first six years of life, making sure that there are books in the home, that parents know how important it is to read to their children, um, expose them to uh, literacy. And over uh, the last 12 months, really focused on feeding children as well, because we wanna fill their bellies and fill their minds. And COVID has had a dramatic impact on the distribution of food through the school lunch program. So Save the Children has stepped into that hole. Uh, we're feeding kids, giving them academic resources, and hopefully filling their minds as well. Mark, we appreciate you. Everything, you're, all the work you're doing. We hope people check out this book. It's called 10 Hidden Heroes. You can get it at today.com or anywhere, yes. really. Get yeah. it wherever you want, wherever thank, books are sold. Yeah, thank you, Mark. <laughs>
And this book is called My Voice is a Trumpet. Jimmy! Jimmy! <laughs> Hello, hello. Uh, okay, first of all, there's too many new things happening in your life where, you know, we, we need to slow down, okay? <laughs> You're newly married. You've got a new children's book. What was the third thing? I don't know. There's you had a baby. A baby, another. You know, you, you've got a, a bunch of new things happening in your life. Just how does it feel to be a newlywed? I know you've been in a relationship for a long time, though. Uh, it feels great. Um, you know, uh, I uh, things, I don't know, it's different. It's not different. But it's different, if that makes sense. I feel like now I kind of really, like, have to listen to her more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because before I could be like, well, this is mine. It says Alan on it. Yeah. She's like, well, it's my last name now. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a new little one Aww. on the way. You, have two, you already have yeah. two beautiful kids. Beautiful. I'm, I'm sure you're looking so forward to that. I am. You know, it's another, it's another girl. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you already know that we will be spending even more time, uh, at Disney world, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a boy. We both did. Hence why we don't have a name yet. And we found out it was going to be a girl. We're like, E, what do we call her? <laughs> what do we call so her? I might just name her. Hey, you. <laughs> Hey, you, come here. You are not. Hey, uh, Jimmy, first of all, I didn't know the, the, this yes. part of your story that you, when you were a little boy, that you were, you stuttered and yeah. it was something that you had to overcome. Tell us what that was like as a little boy dealing with that. Uh, man, it was, it was rough for us because I hated like talking in person. Yeah. Uh, public speaking, forget about it. Reading in public, forget about it and it was one of them things where i started so bad to where <laughs> it's not funny but <laughs> okay it's funny i used to like slap my leg to get the word out mm. like, uh, 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 or i would at <laughs> one time ask my friends a question like uh, hey uh how many how many like man how many times you gonna ask that question i'd be like ah my bad oh, uh, my but no i, I kind of got to the point where you know i, I want to do something about it um so I got a speech therapist. Uh, how do you say it? Speech pathologist. Yeah. That is just, mm -hmm. pathologist yeah, it yeah. sounds expensive. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, so she started having me write down what I wanted to say, right? And then she had me sing the first two words of the sentence because you notice when people sing, they don't stutter. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to say, hey, how y'all doing today? I'd be like, Hey, how y'all doing today? I was like, once mm. I get going, I'm I'm good to go. But ever since I learned how to stop stuttering, well, I can't shut up. <laughs> you know what, too? <laughs> this book is beautiful. It beautiful. compares kids' voices to trumpets, to rainbows, to honey, yeah. some some that are silent. And and I feel like it's a bigger metaphor of teaching kids that they should use their voice for good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. You know, it um it's super important to me because I feel like that age, you know, from birth to four, K through fourth grade, you know, kids are still at the sponge age. And it's like everything that they're going to have in their tool belt as an adult and as a teenager is what's placed into their life at that age. Yeah. So it's important to kind of get in early and let them know that, hey, you're important. It's OK to encourage yourself. It's also OK to encourage other people, you know, and when you see something happening that you don't agree with, you know, you can say something about it, because if we don't they turn into adults who don't encourage other people, don't encourage mm -hmm. themselves. You know, when they see things happen, they're afraid to speak up, you know? So I, I kind of wanted to just get in at a young age and do that. And shout out to my teachers who I am super close with yeah. still my kindergarten teacher, my first grade teacher that were really important to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my life through books, through music, that was uh, Miss Adair. Back then she was Miss Alexander mm -hmm. and Miss Sharp. Um, my kindergarten teacher and my first grade teacher, um, mm, uh, well. Ms. Alexander is actually going to be reading my audio book. Oh, uh, awesome. Well, out. Jimmy, yeah. we, we adore you. I love that you shouted out all your teachers. Yes. That's so you, uh, we want people to check out your book. It's called my voice is a trumpet. You can get it at today.com. It is just beautiful. Love you, Jimmy. Love you, Jimmy. 
He is an Egyptian heart surgeon turned comedian and TV host who's being called the John Stewart of the Middle East. He's got more than 40 million viewers of his political satire show. Now Bassem Youssef and his family call LA home, which led him to write a book for young readers called The Magical Reality of Nadia, a way to help his daughter Nadia t adapt to living in America while embracing her culture. Look at famous Bassem is here. <laughs> Hi Bassem, how are you? Hi, Oda. How are you? Hi, Jenna. Hi. It's so great to see you. Now, we should tell people a little bit of the backstory. You fled Egypt because as a political satirist, that was a no-no. Um, describe your journey here to the U.S. Well, uh, as you said, I ran into some troubles because of comedy, out of all things. And I came here to America in the most interesting political times when, you know, Donald Trump was rising to power. So uh, that kind of inspired me to write something for my daughter, because I think I believe that whatever problems we have to go through as adults, they weren't addressed as young kids. So mm -hmm. I thought like maybe I would like use my experience and kind of channel it into a, a younger readers. But uh, I didn't want it to be on the nose, so I used magic, I used history, <laughs> I used fantasy, and uh, I, I I think it's um, it's a cute book because uh, first of all I get to write a book for my daughter, and. Uh, um, and, and I think she enjoyed it. I, at least she tells me that. Oh, is she right there, by the way? Yeah, where is she? Is she nearby? Okay. We can't, we can't I, go on without oh, there her. She there is. she is. Hi, Nadia. How are oh. you? Good. Good. When, when you found out that your dad was going to write a book with you as the main <laughs> character, the star, what did you tell him? I, I, I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, well, she's very critical, by the way. Uh, she told me, by the way, I get in the book is not uh, at all like me because I do not collect bobbleheads. And I said, and I said, Nadia, this is not an autobiography. It's, an, uh, it's a fiction. So when I told her it's fiction, what did you tell me? Nadia? It's fantasy. It's fantasy because it has magic. Oh. Fantasy. Got, boy, she's smart. I know. I Nadia, love it. you are super smart. You're you're obviously you're the book is written with your daughter as the central character. But this is something that all kids can take a page from. So what do you hope it how, how other kids take from it? Well, oh, no, that, that was a good community. Oh. Sorry. So <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, this is a question that promotes the idea that being different is cool. I think yeah. the the reason um, the, 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 one of the reasons why America is an, a unique place is it allows people with their own differences to come in and to live together. And I, I think there is a message here to tell people that being different is cool. It's not a source of suspicion. It's not a source of uh, weakness. Uh, this country is good, is great because of all of the different people and the different culture here. I think we should embrace our differences while in the same time call ourselves Egyptian American, Chinese American, um, the Korean American, it doesn't matter. We could all come from somewhere. Even if you think that you own this country and you've been here forever, your parents, your grandparents at a certain point came from somewhere, which makes us all basically uh, in the same boat. Well, it's a beautiful book awesome. about acceptance. Yes. I read a little bit to my little girls last night, and Nadia, they love you. <laughs> <laughs> Nadia's a star. Bossom, thank you. Yeah, of course she, she is. is. It was, it's a Bossom, really beautiful book. Thank, thank you, you so Bossom. much. Bye, Nadia. And you can find the magical reality of Nadia. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. On today.com slash shop. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Please. You are <laughs> <laughs> <Look inside. laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Please. You are <laughs> <laughs> <Look inside. laughs> 
some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. You accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For those of you who don't know Rocky Merchandani, she is a mom, she's an award-winning author, and more than that, she is a longtime friend of our show. And girl, she's a force she of nature. She sure is. And now she's written a new book called Hair Twins that centers around a little girl, her dad, and the special bond they share. And it happens to be based on Rocky's daughter and husband. Rocky's with us. Hey, girl. Hi. Hey, friend. It's... How are you? Okay, seeing Rocky just warms my heart. Rocky's <laughs> been a part of this program for almost as long as this program has been in existence. So first of all, we love you. How soft? Yeah, did how's she doing? She's great. She's really salty that I sent her to school today. But I was like, this is I put on Spanx and heels for Hoda and Jenna today. Go to school. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Rocky, I read this beautiful article that you wrote for mm. today.com. Mm. Really, that was the genesis of this book. And you call yeah. it a heart song, mm. which I, like kind of I know. warmed my heart. So will you just, first of all, I've read this book to both of my girls. Yes. They loved it. So will you just tell mm -hmm. us a bit about the genesis of this awesome book? Yeah, thanks. I'm so glad the girls loved it. I was so keen for them to, for you all to share it over a bedtime story. Hair Twins is the story of my family. It is the story of my husband, Agen. It is the story of my daughter, Satya, and it's a story of their bond. Agen and Satya, as part of their faith, uh, they don't cut their hair, as many six don't. And when Satya was little and Agen would tie his turban, Satya would pull up this little stool and stand next to him in the bathroom oh. and watch him tie his <laughs> turban. And it was that moment that took my breath away, an everyday moment, because it's a connection that they shared, this deep bond about who they are, their faith, the community they come from. It ties them to each other, right? But it also ties them to Agen's parents and our grandparents, mm -hmm. to the global community we're a part of. And for me, that bond was so special and so beautiful. I wanted to share it with everybody. So this book is a window into our apartment, into mm -hmm. our lives, mm -hmm. into who we are, into the pride we feel to be all the things we are, Indian and American, sick, from New Jersey. <laughs> and I hope that it's also an invitation. I hope that every single person who reads it, adult or kid, they feel, call they feel called and compelled to share who they are, mm. all the parts of themselves with others. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And I think you did so many things great with Satya. For people who don't remember, she was a little girl who was battling cancer many years ago. And we all held hands and prayed a lot around this studio for that little girl. And she is now <laughs> the subject of a couple of books. But I was just thinking, knowing who you are as a kid is can sometimes be a struggle. Yeah. Because, you know, Kids are, kids are different. All kids are different. And how did you help Satya like feel good in her own skin? I think in some ways she's felt me, she's made me feel good in my own yes. skin, Hoda. I struggled as a little brown girl in mm -hmm. New Jersey in the 80s and 90s. I had a foot in both worlds. I had a foot in India, I had a foot in America. And I felt like my entire existence hinged on keeping those things separate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For Seth, that was really important to us to bring all of who we are and all of, she, of who she is. Oh my God, I love that picture. To everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> like she's a riot. And so we go to her class, right? And now it's over Zoom. And we talk about our holidays. We talk about our food. This weekend or this Thursday, we're going to celebrate Holy with her class. And I think just not compartmentalizing the parts of ourselves, but fully living into all mm -hmm. of who we are all the time has made her own every mm. part of herself and i think she takes up a lot of space in this world <laughs> because she's able to do that and i also hope uh, that she's making space for others right to do the same to yeah. share who they are rocky that's that that's is sort beautiful. of the the part of the mm -hmm. this article about how you, she's different than you are when you were little and there's this moment where a mom in her class sits next to you on a bench in the park and says my daughter wants to be like her my yeah. daughter asked if, if i could braid her hair like <laughs> hers and that must have been like this yeah. profound mom moment for you it actually makes me cry to think about it because i if i could have washed the brown off my skin as a, as, as a little girl i would have mm. done it oh. and 
to hear a mother, it was so generous of her to say this to me. And she said, you know, my daughter, she wants to have beautiful, long, beautiful braids like Satya. <laughs> and I know why Satya's braids are so long. They're long and they're beautiful because they're reflective of her faith because she's a little sick girl, right? And, these, and her hair is a commitment to love and to mm -hmm. equality and to service and to social justice. And to know that when she walks through the world, mm -hmm. folks see it for what it is, confidence, beauty, connection. <sighs> I mean, it Rocky, was, <laughs> we can't. Okay, <laughs> Rocky, <laughs> please stop doing this to us. We love you. Please get this hair twins. This is so good. And we love you. you. Uh, go uh, to I love you both so thank much. Thank you, Rocky, for being here. And Today.com yes. slash shop. Twins. Pick it up. Buy it wherever you can. All right. And we'll be back right after this. Mm. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever played. Oh, the right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah. things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold cut. My buddy cow cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. <laughs> this morning, a story of people helping people. Hello and welcome to Consumer Confidential on Today All Day. I'm NBC News investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn. Tune in each week for insider tips on the products and services that make an impact on your daily life. This week, a focus on healthcare with a look at the dangers of traveling for medical procedures and ways to save money on prescription drugs, plus helpful home remedies for common ailments. All that and more coming up on Today All Day. I lost a ton of weight. Lindsay Colosimo was on a journey to transform her life and health. How many pounds did you lose? 100 pounds total. After working out and changing her diet, the 37-year-old insurance saleswoman from Delray Beach, Florida, turned to surgery for the last touch on her dream body. I wanted to be more comfortable in my own skin. I wanted the self-esteem boost that I felt would come from going to have surgery after I put in all this work. In 2012, Lindsay went under the knife for a tummy tuck and breast implants with a local doctor. But she wasn't happy with the results, so this past May, she turned to a plastic surgeon based in Colombia. She says she spoke to two friends who recommended the doctor and she was impressed by his Instagram page. What was it about going to another country to have these procedures done? What appealed to you about this type of medical tourism? There's a vast savings. And you tried to do other research and homework. Yes, I did. I looked him up online. Everything looked good to go. So Lindsay traveled to Colombia with plans to stay for 15 days. She underwent a tummy tuck, butt lift, liposuction, and breast augmentation. And for all that surgery, Lindsay says the price was right. It was $10,000 for just the surgery in Colombia, including anesthesia, everything. For the same surgeries in the U.S., it would be about 30000 Lindsay says her medical nightmare began almost immediately after surgery. Most of the photos are too graphic to show you on TV, but the complications required her to stay overseas twice as long as she planned. When did you start to realize the results were not what you expected? Probably day two when I looked down. Now, more than four months later, Lindsay is still dealing with open wounds on her breasts. Her current doctor in Florida tells NBC News parts of Lindsay's breast tissue died and she had multiple infections from E. coli in her stomach and chest. I didn't know how anyone would be able to, sorry, how they would be able to fix that. Dr. Joshua Lampert is a board certified plastic surgeon based in Miami. He explains why medical tourism can be dangerous. Patients will go have the surgery on the budget and whatever money they save, if they have a complication that lands them in the emergency room or the hospital, those fees can be astronomical. It's not just about the surgery itself, it's also being able to have access to that surgeon after. Small, minor, little complications, those things can be nipped in the bud when follow-up is close. The surgeon's there, intervenes early, and prevents something that could be small to become something that could be terrible. 
For Lindsay, this advice came too late. Why was it so important for you to share this very personal story? I don't want this to happen to another person. I was probably not educated enough about medical tourism and what I should have looked for and what I needed to know. So therefore, I will now pay for it for the rest of my life. If I could stop one person from having to do that, it's worth it. So tough. Well, Lindsay says she is not planning to sue that doctor. We reached out to him. He's a doctor in Columbia. He says Lindsay didn't follow her instructions for her recovery, but that her complications don't mean that it was due to bad practice. So if you are curious, Lindsay spent an additional $7,000 on medical Jeez. treatment since. So all the savings she was hoping to achieve all wiped out mm -hmm. now. So if, if folks are considering traveling abroad to get a surgery, some sort of medical procedure, what, what can they do to make sure that they're getting a reputable doctor? Or can they? Right. And look, it, it can go well. It does go well for many, many Americans every year, but you have to do your homework. Key is to make sure that surgeon is board certified. Check out the qualifications. The other thing is always have that conversation because the follow-up care is just as important mm -hmm. as the initial surgery. What if you have a complication? A small issue can turn into a big issue if you don't have follow-up care. And where are you going to be treated mm. if something does come up? Because mm -hmm. it's not that easy to just jump on a plane back to Columbia, right. if you're back in the States. Going back to that first uh, tip, though, make sure your doctor's board certified. So doctors overseas are also board certified? There are different certifications depending on the different countries. But okay. yes, there are different levels. And that's where you have to get in and do your homework about what is the highest certification? What Where affiliations does that doctor have with good. hospitals there? If it's a good hospital that they're associated with, that's a really good sign. It's a good, important, important story. Mm, yeah. yeah. Prescription drug prices are on the rise, jumping 9% a year from 2008 to 2016. The average American pays about $1,200 out of pocket on their prescription medications each year. So how can you save? Meet single mom Stephanie and her 16-year-old daughter Holly from Dallas. They both suffer from allergies. We have multiple allergy medicines. Most of them we take on a daily basis. What is it like if you don't have your meds? It's miserable. I mean, you constantly blowing your nose, and especially with my inhaler, you can't take a full breath. Stephanie says she pays more than $2,600 a year on prescription meds. So I get to work looking for savings. First tip, get a membership to pharmacies at stores like Costco, Kmart, or Kroger. Flonase, that is a big one for your family. Yes. We found that if you join the Kroger Pharmacy Membership Club for a small fee, your prescription is half off. You're paying $288 a year right now for both of you. Yes. We can cut that to $144 a year. That's amazing. 50% savings. Next, check for additional discounts using prescription savings apps like GoodRx and Blink Health, two of the most popular free apps that search thousands of pharmacies so you can choose the lowest price. What's unique about these apps? You're opting out of insurance and instead paying out of pocket or with your flexible spending account. You mentioned Lunesta, you can get it for $16.87 a month. Then things really start adding up. So you're paying $67 a month for this medication. That's correct. And we found it for $22.54 a month. Never seen it that low. With all these tips, I saved the family nearly $1,500 a year. Really? Yes. That's really a lot. I had no idea that I could save that amount of money. Across town, the Venturas family, like so many others across the country, say they've seen the cost of their prescription drugs skyrocket. How much do you spend a year on prescription medicines? So probably close to like $1,260. Yeah, we definitely have had to make adjustments to fit in a new thing in our budget that we weren't expecting. But within minutes, I start saving them money. I'm pretty excited about this because you said you spend about $19 a month on yeah. thyroid meds. We found a deal on Blink Health for $3.76. That's incredible. That's an 80% savings. Wow, that's Yay. awesome. But that's not all. On GoodRx, I find their son's allergy and asthma medication for free. That's amazing. The third savings tip, search for discount cards on drugs.com. I find them a few dollars off an asthma medicine. But yes. Every little bit counts. In all, with the discount card, apps, and checking the membership pharmacies, I saved the Venturas family more than $400 per year on their medications. Wow. That's a plane ticket.
And something to keep in mind, these discounts are always changing. So you got to check those apps every few weeks for updates because you might find a better deal that way. So mm -hmm. discount cards, apps, like any other ways that folks can save on, on their meds at the counter? I think this one is key. Up until last year, pharmacists in some states were not allowed to volunteer to you that there's a cheaper medicine out there. No. You had to actively ask because they were under a gag order. So always ask, hey, is there a generic, is there a cheaper version of this medicine? And that way you'll find out. This Just ask. Good. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Ancestry is stepping into the genetic health testing ring, not just offering a look back at your roots, but also what's in your future and the potential health risks that could be lurking in your DNA. This morning, I'm taking the test to show you how it works, the potential drawbacks, and what you need to know before you send off your spit. Ancestry now joining its competitors, searching your saliva to find clues about your health in your DNA. It's going to involve both genetics as well as non-genetic indicators of health, an emphasis on family health history, an emphasis on preventative action. With 15 million people in the Ancestry DNA database, the company predicts more than 2 million would have a potential health risk identified with this new test. We wanted to know how it works and what makes it different. So I took the test. Welcome to the beginning of your story. Providing a saliva sample. I don't think there's a ladylike way to do this. And sending it off. Ready to go. Ancestry gave us a first look inside the lab where samples like mine end up. Quest Diagnostics will handle the new genetic health testing. These machines are equipped with the latest technology to pinpoint specific DNA markers that could help tell you about nine different health conditions you may be at risk of developing. The new product has two levels of testing. The first, microarray technology, provides snapshots of information from your genes, looking at a few key spots in your DNA for conditions including an increased risk of breast cancer, heart disease, or if you're a carrier of cystic fibrosis. The second level of testing, available in January, is called next generation sequencing. It analyzes millions of locations in your DNA, which means a higher chance of detecting a health risk. What is it that Ancestry is offering that hasn't been offered to consumers before? The science is evolving. What we understand about risk is evolving. We can see something today that we don't understand, understand it tomorrow, and still deliver it to you. Ancestry promises regular updates for members as genetic research evolves. Doctors say these tests can provide a snapshot of your health, but they don't screen for all health conditions, and you should talk with your physician about your results. That's in part why Ancestry offers certified genetic counselors who can talk with you. Once I got my results... Hi, Robin, how are you? I set up a video chat with Great. Robin King, a genetic counselor based in North Carolina. She says my test didn't find any indicators for health risks. 
It doesn't necessarily mean you don't have any DNA difference associated with them, but it would be more likely if you had a family history of any of those conditions. I immigrated from Vietnam, so I don't really know a lot about my family history. How does that affect the results of this test and what I can take away from this test? Not knowing your family history means that you have a little bit less to go on. She says a key limitation of DNA tests like this, the results are less sensitive for non-white populations because there's not as much diversity in the research. But if your test results show you have a higher risk of a certain condition, Ancestry says take that information to your doctor. Something else to consider when it comes to these tests, how your information is stored. Experts say read the privacy policy before handing over your DNA. Ancestry told us you're in control of your genetic information and you can decide at any time whether you want that data to be deleted from the database. And keep in mind, this test is not yet available to residents of New York, New Jersey, or Rhode Island, but the company says that is all in the works. Lotions and sprays, to sticks, powders, and even foams, sunscreen comes in more forms than ever. With so many types on the market, it can be confusing to decide which is right for you. So we turn to Dr. Mona Gohara. What does SPF stand for and what does it do for our skin? SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor, and it protects our skin from harmful ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B lights. What do those rays do to our skin? Ultraviolet B burns the skin, and it also can create skin cancer. Ultraviolet A ages the skin and can also contribute to skin cancer. When picking a sunscreen, Dr. Gohara says look for three key phrases on any product you buy broad spectrum, SPF, and 30 or higher. If you plan to swim, add water resistant to the checklist. And did you know the sunscreen you use at the pool may not be the one you want if you're swimming in the ocean because of chemicals that can harm marine life? Look for sunscreens that say they're reef safe. The National Park Service reports up to 6,000 tons of sunscreen washes into coral reefs around the world every year. But having fun in the sun isn't the only time you should think about protecting your skin. Dr. Gohara recommends wearing sunscreen in the car and indoors, reapplying every two hours. If I'm sitting at home, working from home, or if someone's sitting in front of a computer or on their phone, they need SPF too? Absolutely, particularly with brown skin, more melanin-rich skin, the blue light that comes from our computer screens and cell phones can actually create what's called melasma or hyperpigmentation. What should you be looking for when it comes to sunscreen indoors? Sunscreen indoors should just be tinted and have the ingredient iron oxide. You can usually find iron oxide in powder sunscreens. They come in a variety of shades to match different skin tones, and they cost anywhere from around 20 to 70 bucks. They're also great for daily reapplication because none of us want to walk around our office smelling like a pina colada, like you know, reapplying sunscreen. Speak Use for yourself. Product. Yeah. <laughs> As for kids, Dr. Gohara suggests using a mineral sunscreen lotion. If you use a spray, just make sure to apply outdoors or in a well-ventilated space. Whatever the age, 16-year-old Sasha Marmer hopes to shine a light on sun care and protecting our skin. With a stroke of quarantine creativity, Sasha, along with her mom, dermatologist Dr. Ellen Marmer, created Sasha Skin Care. All profits go to Beyond Sun Care, an organization aimed at preventing skin cancer in those born with albinism in Africa. What's the best part of being an entrepreneur for you? I actually met someone with albinism, and before even trying the products, she told me how meaningful it was for her. From Africa to America, universal tips for sun care. And so far, Sasha's sun care has raised $3,000. Sasha and her mom are planning a trip to Africa later this summer to meet some of those who are benefiting from their mother-daughter pandemic project. Wow. Yeah. I have to ask about the J&J, &J, the sunscreen that was recalled. It was the aerosol sprays yes, under Neutrogena and Aveeno. Mm -hmm. I, I threw out three full cans. I mean, is that really what you're supposed to do? Just get rid of them? That's really what they're advising. They're saying you should stop using those products, throw them away, but you can actually get a refund, Dylan. Just oh. go to the Johnson & Johnson Consumer Care website. 
Benzene isn't actually an ingredient in any of those recalled sunscreens, so it's not something you can look for on the packaging. The company says it is launching an investigation into how benzene mm. ended up in the, the sunscreen. The front of it actually says, does not contain benzene. Wow, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Wow. So apparently it did right. in these tests. So yeah, throw it out, but get your money back. Okay. So, so Vic, what's the difference between min mineral and, and chemical sunscreens? And, and if a sunscreen has an S SPF over 30, is that worth the extra money? Yeah, this is really interesting. So mineral sunscreen is actually what sits on top of your skin and it physically blocks UV rays. Chemical sunscreen is absorbed into the skin that will convert the UV rays into heat. Dr. Gohara says when mm. you put those on correctly, SPF 30 would actually block about 97% of harmful UV rays. SPF 100 only blocks about 99%. So it's a minimal mm. difference, 2%. So if the cost is a lot more to get mm -hmm. that higher sure. SPF, you don't need to. Just reapply every mm. two hours. And make sure you check the expiration date. Yes. For sure. That's really important, actually. You don't want to use these products past their expiration date. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Some home remedies are actually more effective than others. So how do you know what's best? What's just ridiculous? <laughs> Our investigative and consumer correspondent, Vicki Wynn, is joining us to separate fact from fiction. We, we make you do everything. I know. <laughs> and you're really going to exhaust my mosquito knowledge this morning. Oh. Well, I'm one of those people who gets attacked by mosquito bites. And then I get the big lumps, you know, and I'm, I'm putting X's in it with my, with my fingernails. I do that is too. It, yeah, I don't know if that works. It helps. It um, helps. Anyway. <laughs> Does it? Yeah, are it feels like it makes it go more down. attracted to sweet blood. So this is really sweet interesting. Blood? This is closer to false than it is true, but mosquitoes are attracted to a certain type of blood because based on our type of blood, we secrete a certain thing that they can smell. Mm -hmm. So do you know what type blood you have? Mm -hmm. Because oh. if you're O, they love you. Uh, that's why. Oh, oh, oh is yeah. it? Oh. Twice as oh. likely to be attracted to you than type A. I'm type A. That explains a and lot. And then B is somewhere in the middle. I don't know if you know yeah. your blood type, but um, that's A B. Okay, well yeah. A B. Yeah. The research I don't remember the research on A B, but you're probably somewhere in the middle. Just sit <laughs> okay. next to this guy, you'll be fine. Yeah. So, so mosquitoes stay away from me? No, they no, love they, your they're, blood. Oh, okay. They that's love right. your blood. So I need to be near him. Yes. So they're using their smell. Oh, they're cool. also using their sight. They can see like 16 to 50 feet. So they zero in on people. And also they can detect carbon dioxide emissions. So that's sort of interesting. Pregnant ladies, yes, there's research that shows huh. they're more attracted to you when you're pregnant. Really? Mm -hmm. And also if you've recently drunk a beer. Oh, no. What, what about color? Around? Yeah, you what? put their O in your beer breath. Yeah, that's You're that's like it. a mosquito <laughs> paradise. <laughs> Can you wear uh, different colors attract them? Yes, this is really interesting. So as I said, they're very visual. They say dark colors are what attracts mosquitoes. So green, huh. red, black. If you wear light colors, that's a good way to avoid them. I was today years old. And, yeah, and, and you me just, too. Like, you just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. you Do you get eaten by mosquitoes oh, a lot? Oh, yes. And like poor kids. Like they yeah, are just. Kids, yeah. You know, one of the things you can do is set up a fan 
on your That's deck because they're they, they're not very strong no. flyers. Oh. So and oil is supposed to help too, like skin so soft. Remember back oh, in the day? Oh, I remember that. Or yeah. WD-40. What about <laughs> that's, we'll that's, that's, right off. another big annoyance during the summer? Sunburns. Like, what, what are some, some good home remedies for that? What doesn't work? What does work? So you mentioned butter and vinegar. Do you think butter can help? Butter so never, smooth I can't and greasy? Imagine. I've never heard of that. You're right. It's not. It's okay. not good. It's not good. You don't want to put butter on your skin if it's a sunburn because that's just going to introduce potentially foreign proteins mm -hmm. to your body. Ooh. Vinegar. What do you think about vinegar? That seems like it might work. Vinegar what? is an acid. It will burn yeah, your okay. skin. Yeah. It will hurt. It will no, sting. No, no. So you don't you're want to already burned. Cut. Now you're putting oh, acid. I thought maybe that. Well, there you go. We debunked shampoo. those. So no on the butter, no on the vinegar. Yes on the creams and lotions that contain aloe vera gel. Mm -hmm. Yes on the cold showers. And drinking a ton of cold water will also oh. bring the pain down. Mm. If it's really bad, then you can take the ibuprofen or the aspirin. But mm -hmm. steer clear of butter and vinegar. And also wear your sunblock. A hundred percent. SPF is so, so nice. that's the thing. So what do you think about getting like a pre-tan? Remember, you know, growing up, you yeah, like, right. I'm going to get a pre-tan. So I, I never, never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> oh, never right, thought right, about right. it. We were already born with a pre-tan. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> well, you know what? You actually have SPF. So yes. those of us with more melanin in our skin, uh -huh. we have natural SPF of like anywhere from two to eight, right? You were saying your brother would get the pre-tan? No, uh, my husband, oh. Brian, who's like as, as white as this paper, mm -hmm. um, he <laughs> he's a big fan of the pre-base tan before going. Forgive my ignorance. Yes. What's the pre-tan? So, for us people, we, we <laughs> kind of get a little base tan before you go into, like, a stronger sun. It's like pre-gaming so, before you go. <laughs> you know, so Brian will go outside a couple days without sunscreen locally if we're Which going to, Which doesn't seem like, like a great idea. Yeah. But then not. you go to Florida where the sun is stronger, and then you end up not burning. And by the way, the sun's not stronger. <laughs> well, it feels strong. Oh, true, meteorologist. Okay. She said all right, it's not so true if, anyway. If so. We've all been spending time outside. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. Going out in the woods. Some of us pre-tanning, yeah. Yeah, that's right. What about poison <laughs> ivy? Okay, so poison ivy. We have a picture here. I want to see if you can identify poison ivy. How much time have you spent out in the woods? Which one do you think it is? Left, uh, middle, or the one on the right? One on the right. I think left. Uh, I can't tell. One it on the is right. the one on the right. Oh. Leaves of three, let it be. But it looks a lot like Wait, the one on the, the left, right? Leaves of three, yeah. let it be? Yeah, yeah that's what they say. Mm -hmm. and, but the one the on the left, left sort of looks like it has right. leaves of three, too. So Leaves of four, get out and score. <laughs> <laughs> leaves of four, four-leaf <laughs> clover. That's good luck, right? So they actually say that leaves of three, you're, another way to look at it is think about the long leaf in the middle being like a body. Mm -hmm. And so that's a little bit easier. And then the two other ones are like little arms. That's yeah. what I read. Um, but they're coarse. They are not they're glossy shiny. or shiny. Are they shiny or not? I think Let's see. Shiny. Yes, it actually can be yeah. shiny or dull, um, and yeah. so you basically just stay out of the woods. So if you get if you get <laughs> if you get the poison the ivy, what should you do? So okay, first you try gosh. to prevent by wearing the long sleeves mm -hmm. and the socks and tucking your pants into the socks. That's actually eating the plant. Too. Yes, this is the poison ivy fact check, right? People so some people it? were saying people if you eat, eat the plant, that that helps to desensitize you. I just feel like which is bad for you. No, it's horrible. Yes. Definitely avoid at all costs, internally, externally. Completely. Gasoline? That was a home remedy? Gas Who are these people out here? <laughs> for breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Oh, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. If you are going somewhere where it's going to be really hot, something you can do to help acclimate your body to the heat is either going to a sauna or a steam room if you have access and going there for about 30 minutes 
a day for seven days. Doctors say this will actually help your body to learn how to sweat appropriately. Hmm. So when you get to that hot destination, you're better Oh, if you're going it. on a trip, you're right. saying, yes. not just to yes. the beach. Not just to the beach, you probably don't need to do that. But if you're going somewhere, maybe for a week, like Tokyo, yeah. before mm -hmm. Tokyo, when right. it was like sweltering, that would have been a good thing to do, Tom. Yeah. Put the sunscreen sauna. on in the sauna, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good, you're good. That's well, right. with your skin tone, maybe. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I need to do the opposite if I were to go to a cold weather destination, like sit in a freezer and then adjust to the cold. You know what, it should work the same way, should, honestly. It right? gets, you know, like, gets you going. And I know. Gets your thermostat up, your internal thermostat. <laughs> I, I like that. Um, let's talk about dehydration. Is yeah. it true that it's better to drink water over the course of the day as opposed to just chugging a whole bunch and calling it quits? When it comes to dehydration, no question that drinking small amounts of water more frequently will help hydrate your body more effectively. It's much more effective than just waiting till you get super thirsty and then mm -hmm. chugging a bunch of water. The CDC actually recommends in super hot temperatures every 15 to 20 minutes an eight ounce glass of water. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is That's it true you can drink too much water? It is true. Actually, it can lead to a medical condition. If you drink like 48 ounces or more in a half hour, that can actually cause some issues. The other thing you want to do if you're going somewhere hot and you want to stay hydrated, get a good night's rest. Hmm. Eight hours of rest over six hours will help you stay better hydrated. You also want to plan ahead. So bring, you know, those camel packs that have like the yeah, bladder yeah, yeah, built into that. the backpack. Yeah, those are really helpful because you don't have to lug around a big heavy bottle of water and it reminds you to take sips more often. The camel pack, it's like a backpack yeah. and it yeah. has a straw that comes that up. I used it, it on the RV deals. trip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> actually, no. <laughs> I actually just learned what that was, which was our trip. And you can actually put like beer and margaritas in there, and so yes. like, you want to have a great time at the beach. <laughs> okay, since we teased it, I want to make sure we talk about yes. food poisoning. It's actually oh, yeah. becoming an issue. Oh, summer. absolutely. The, the number one issue during the summer with food is food poisoning because the temperatures are <laughs> higher, right? So you want to prevent it. That's the best thing you want to do. So that means cooking all of your food at the right temperature. A $10 to $15 investment in a food thermometer is probably the best thing. Getting the meats to the right temperature to begin with. Keep your cold food cold, your hot food hot. And if it's been out for a while at a potluck or a picnic, you want to toss it out. Okay. On a picturesque dairy farm in the corner of California, happy cows are chewing and producing an old school kind of plant-based milk. We're primarily grass farmers, and, and these cows are, are simply the, the tool to take that grass and convert it into you know, products that we can then put on the shelf. This is the Alexandra family farm, all organic and using what are called regenerative practices. We're sequestering carbon. We're taking carbon out of the air, and we are doing our share to heal the planet in the sense of greenhouse gases. That means focusing first on soil that produces thousands of acres of carbon capturing fields and grass grown with a mix of nutrients from local fish scraps, healthy manure, and helpful free roaming chickens. The Alexander family has been farming for five generations, but it wasn't until they had five kids that they started to realize massive modern dairy production just wasn't for them. I think what we saw was that that system and that style, uh, our business approach, probably didn't have a long-term future. And as they pivoted to organic farming, they also started to learn more about special cows that produced milk that can be easier on some human stomachs. We knew we could be the dairy alternative to dairy alternatives and bring people back to dairy, real dairy. An estimated 50 million Americans experience lactose intolerance, and that's given rise to racks of soy, almond, and all kinds of other alternatives. But today, more studies are showing it might not be the lactose causing bloating, gas, and abdominal pain for some, but rather a specific protein found in most cow milk called A1. A quick biology lesson. Thousands of years ago, most cows used to make milk that had a protein known as A2, similar to human breast milk. But somewhere along the way, there was a mutation, and now most modern dairy cows produce milk with the A1 protein instead. So one solution? Only select and breed cows with the A2 proteins. Did this seem like a no-brainer? Yes, it seemed like an obvious choice. <laughs> now the Alexanders have raised three herds, producing 100% A2 milk making them the first U.S.-based farm to sell organic A2 milk across the country.
with a protein that's much closer to what humans drank thousands of years ago, when grabbing a nutter might have just been another Monday morning. Now, I always assumed I was lactose intolerant, but after two glasses and a couple more handfuls, oh, look there at you that. Go. My stomach was still feeling fine. We meet people that haven't had dairy in 20 years, and they can eat our dairy products again. And so it's really rewarding to be able to bring this option to people in an organic A2, A2 version. And while A2 milk and regular milk have the same amount of lactose, some nutritionists say A2 might be easier to process. There are some studies showing that for people that have this lactose intolerance, drinking milk that only contains that A2 form of the protein can reduce some of those symptoms. Now the Alexanders hope the future of milk will be a return to their cow's ancient past. And while A2 milk might be good for some people, if you think you have a lactose intolerant, you should definitely consult with your doctor. Uh, and this would not help if you have an allergy to milk or dairy. Guys? Where can you get it, Gotti? We, I'm, oh, we you can get it. it all across the country, yeah. So right now they're selling at Whole Foods. There's a bunch oh. of other retailers, but the best way uh, they say to make sure that's on the shelves is to just ask your local grocer. Uh, they're that smaller farm up in Northern California. So right now they're trying to get into more stores. Uh, Whole Foods definitely carries mm -hmm. them uh, nationwide, but it really comes down to you going up to your grocer and asking uh, for them to stock that on their shelves. Could you ask them to make huh. ice cream, Gotti, when you're all done? <laughs> ice, ice cream, yes, please. yogurt, they get make on half it. and half. Oh, they, yeah, oh, they all do. those you things. Go. Yep. Wow. And you just look for A2, okay. that's it? That's right. right. A2, yeah, Thank A2, you. A2. Those are those okay. two pro the, the two proteins. Okay. A2, A2 A is the the what you see okay. on the on the milk mm -hmm. carton, thing. and that tells you that you're using those proteins. And thank you, by the way, also, Gotti, for, for the visual as well. We enjoyed seeing you. I mean, that you did great. Okay. Wild, right? Total bucket list. Yeah. 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 Uh, get it, bucket list. Yeah. See what you did there. By the way, <laughs> yep, you can learn you more go. about that milk. Uh, you can also see Gotti milk it once again by going <laughs> uh, to today.com. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. If you look at us, you know, we're not your typical version of what a farmer would be, but we like to call everyone on our team unexpected farmers. Nona Yahia and Caroline Este are unexpected in more ways than one. You two didn't even really know each other, is that right? Until you started putting this company together? Yes. Yeah. Really what brought us together is that we were concerned citizens who really love our community and saw an opportunity to build a business. While their community, Jackson, Wyoming, has a thriving winter scene, it doesn't leave a lot of time for things to grow. You get about four months of a growing season at best. And so we import over 98% of our food. So wow. we said, can we do something about that? The only problem, space. So Nona, an architect by trade, came up with a creative solution. There was a sliver of land that measured 30 feet wide by 150 feet long. And the town's like, hey, we need an idea here. And that's when we looked at each other and we said, we could go up. That's how now on a 10th of an acre, we grow the equivalent of 10 acres worth of food. But there was another important piece they wanted to grow too. 
At that time, I was providing one-on-one -on -one care for adults and children with developmental and intellectual disabilities. A lot of the young adults I was working with were done with school and there was no plan. Um, one of our parents likes to say it was like falling off a cliff. For Nona, it hit close to home. I have a brother with developmental disabilities. From when I was very young, I understood that he had as many gifts to give to the world as I did, but the world just wasn't ready to receive them. And so this opportunity to grow food and futures substantially in our community, that took me over from the second I started working on it. The two got to work, but it would be another seven years before Vertical Harvest, a three-story hydroponic greenhouse was officially built. What was that like when it was finally finished? surreal. We went from passion to then purpose to focus. Since their launch in March of 2016, there have been other hurdles too. This is fungus, dude. This is fungus. I can't tell you how many times they were like, maybe, you know, this might be one hurdle too high to jump. But today, not only are the plants thriving, I got this. but the people are too. I'm Johnny Feifels. And I'm a go at Vertical Harvest. What do you think of Caroline and, and Nona, their mission to, to help people? They're so noble. I like them. I like you, Nona. I like you, Caroline. Your mission nope. is very admirable. There's a sea change of perception of what this population is able to do. Many of our farmers came in as entry-level positions, and Caroline and I were astounded by when you focus on ability, how fast a person can move up the corporate ladder. So now a lot of our employees are managing teams, they're managing divisions. That's 20% cooler than my last job. It's almost as if you are ready to literally change the world. We see the power in the model. Yes, it's about farming. Yes, it's about creating really amazing head of lettuce. But what else can we do? What are the other problems that we can solve? And I think it takes a team of unexpected farmers like ourselves to really think out of the box to be able to do that. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin. We grew apples and cherries, and uh, I didn't know that I was ever going to be back on the farm uh, professionally. But this is not Matt Barnard's family farm or anything else that resembles soil and sun. This is Plenty, a fully automated indoor farm, creating crops from seedlings to harvest to packaging, using groundbreaking technology for growing plants vertically in water. 
The goal when founding Plenty was, can we design and develop a farm that is more water efficient, that's more land efficient, and most importantly, makes those choices the choices that people want. The facility housed in a San Francisco industrial park currently grows enough greens to supply more than 100 grocery stores. Out in the field, what happens is those minerals get spread as fertilizer over the soil, and at Plenty, all we do is we dissolve those nutrients in the water. We can take something the size of a football stadium and turn that into something that's the equivalent of many hundreds of acres out in the field. Matt created Plenty after years of working in telecommunications. And then I started to follow my passions. I focused on investing in water technology companies to try to help solve the stresses on the water system. And during that time, I learned that agriculture accounts for 70 to 80% of all water consumption on the planet. In a plenty farm, we use 95 to 99% less water than is used in a field on the same crops. Plants start as normal seeds, spending 10 days in the grow room, processed at 200 plants per minute. Our goal is for plants to get to people's home and have the first time those plants have been touched be the, the, the person who's going to eat them. Since the plants are grown in a sterile environment, no need for pesticides or genetic modification. Here we have a mixture called Velvet Spice. Chef Anthony Secviar is an advisor at Plenty and uses the produce in his Palo Alto restaurant. It comes into our restaurant immaculate and ready to serve, so we don't have to put it through the process of water, drying, manipulation with hands. Matt says the difference between a Plenty product and other traditionally farmed produce, taste. We're going to finish this with some purslane, which will give it a nice succulent texture. Created with the farm's unique methods for manipulating climate conditions that fruits and vegetables like to grow in. The biggest thing is flavor. Every day we test what comes out of the farm, we, we eat it. We have people trained on how to uh, evaluate how food tastes. Yeah, we get rid of uh, things that cause people to stop eating after a couple bites, like that cloying bitterness in a kale or in many other leafy greens. According to Matt, the future of farming is already here. There are 500 communities around the world with a million or more people. Uh, uh, we want to start there. <laughs> what we know is that people want to eat more fruits and vegetables, if only they love them. On a farm just south of Des Moines, Matt Russell helps with the birth of a calf. There you go, good job. He's a fifth generation farmer and his connection to the land and what it can produce is visceral. Is there still some romance left out here? It's all romance. Funny <laughs> a cover. Matt and his husband Patrick bought the ground and the house 14 years ago, converted it from corn and soybeans to almost all pasture and produce. We shifted that so now we have much better water quality coming off. We're not depleting the soil, but we're actually building up the soil. Matt is a leader in a movement toward eco-friendly and sustainable farming. His place has become a must stop for Democratic candidates. His message, Iowa can help cure the climate ills that plague the planet. The science is pretty clear that we can start to pull a significant amount of carbon out of the atmosphere and put it to work in our soils. And when we do that, we reduce the emissions from agriculture, so it's a twofer. Russell had studied to become a priest, then devoted himself to public policy. When he came upon this farm up for sale, he realized he had finally found his true calling. When I figured out my discipleship, what's my call? It was sustainability, natural resources, agriculture. So that's your holy trinity. That's, there you go, yeah. The blue-jeaned evangelist speaks in church basements and barns, his sermons sounding warnings of the coming climate apocalypse. If we keep this in corn and soybeans for the next 20 years, just like it is right now, we're essentially saying we're accepting the tipping point. We give up. We're going into the catastrophic climate crisis. One by one, he's been converting farmers into the communion of carbon sequestration, the process of capturing carbon from the atmosphere and storing it in the ground. Iowa State agronomist Dr. Emily Heaton says, indeed, there is salvation in the soil. This is the magic stuff. Yeah, so there's about two and a half feet of this right here. Yeah. And this is the, this is, used to be in the atmosphere, right? This is dark because there's soil carbon in here that used to be in the atmosphere. Right. That the prairie captured, putting its roots and putting our soil. Prairie, pasture, 
perennials can form something like a giant vacuum to cleanse our poison skies, and water too. But if I'm a farmer, I don't get paid for that. You know, you can't take prairie to the elevator and get a check for it, that's true. This, however, could be a cash crop, Miscanthus giganteus. Planted once, it's a grass that will grow to over 12 feet high, year after year. As a carbon sequestration tool, it's fantastic. It just keeps sucking up carbon. We use the above ground stuff for whatever we want, fuel, building materials, animal bedding, you name it. And then what is put below ground just stays there. Could this really be the future? Yeah, oh yeah. This is a big piece of the puzzle. Iowa State has fields full of experiments and measuring stations to monitor ways farmers can lean into the future. I think I'm a realist. I'm from this land, and I want this land to persist. And for that to happen, it very likely means paying farmers to implement some of these practices. For true believers like Matt Russell, it would be money well spent. Is this doable? I mean, you talk about this stuff, and it's an election year, and there, are, you know, people start to, ooh, oh, you know, the Iowa farmland can help save the planet. Right. I mean, really? Yeah, I believe it with everything I've got. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <bad. laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to you today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. U.S. dietary guidelines suggest eating seafood two to three times a week. There are a lot of options out there, so navigating the fish department can be a little tricky. That's right. This morning, we are heading to the state where roughly 66% of all wild seafood and 95% of wild salmon mm. harvested in the U.S. Mm. comes from. We're talking about Alaska and joining us from Kodiak, we've got... Hannah Heimbuck, a third-generation commercial fisherman who specializes in sustainable fishing practices. Hannah, it's good to see you. This Hannah, morning. great to see you. So a lot of us, when we are going fish shopping, we go to like one of those uh, fish places that have, they have a million choices and we don't know like which is the freshest. How was that one caught? So what would be your ABCs on how to choose properly? Absolutely. You know, as a lifelong commercial fisherman from Alaska, I totally understand how important it is to know where your food comes from. But shopping sustainably can be confusing. Uh, I think one of the best ways to know that you're getting the best is simply to choose seafood from Alaska, because that's a guarantee that it's wild and sustainable every time, because it's actually written into our state constitution oh. that our management is based on science and sustainability. We trust our scientists to tell us how much we can catch responsibly, and that's what we do. And, you know, part of the reason you can trust that is that Alaskan fishing communities have been doing this for generations. My indigenous neighbors have been thriving on seafood for nearly 10,000 years. So healthy fish and sustainable fisheries, super personal to us. Hannah, walk us through what's in front of you. I love that shot of Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all some of the seafood from Alaska. What do you have there? 
Oh, yeah. You know, there are so many great seafood options that come from Alaska, starting with this white fish. That's your milder mm. flavor, really kid friendly, like this Alaska halibut, which is in season right now, or the Alaska pollock. And my personal favorite, wild Alaska cod, that's going to be amazing in your fish tacos, fish and chips and chowder, super lean protein. But we can't leave out the iconic wild Alaskan salmon mm -hmm. packed full of those healthy omega-3s. Mm -hmm. We have the sockeye or red salmon. And you know wild sockeye because of that deep red gorgeous color. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the, the rich and delicious king salmon everyone's heard of and the coho as well. But don't let me forget the king crab, <laughs> world famous Gross. delicious Jeez. treat. Yeah, it's Absolutely gorgeous. This is so fun to serve as a whole leg with mm. your friends. You know, crack it open, dip it in butter. Yum. It's a meal, it's an activity, <laughs> and it's just a great treat. Mm. <laughs> Hannah, so a lot of folks are, are intimidated mm -hmm. when it comes to seafood. I'm, I'm making some coho salmon tonight. But it, it is pretty simple. Give us some simple ideas. Oh, yeah. It can be intimidating, but actually it's so easy and so quick. You can do it in less than 15 minutes. Great example is this pan seared Alaskan salmon right here. You can lightly coat a, a heated pan with oil and sear your filet about four minutes on each side, top with your favorite sauce, and you're done. You're winning. It's mm. great. For even more winning, um, something that mm. really surprises most people is that you can cook seafood right from frozen um, and doesn't compromise the quality at all. This is my speed right mm -hmm. here. Pull it straight out of the freezer, cold water rinse, and a pat dry on each side, hmm. and then straight into Wait, your favorite Wait, a frozen recipe. block of fish you can put right in the oven? Mm. I did not know that. Okay. That's right. It's so <laughs> delicate. It just, uh, yeah, it it's really works really well. Yum. I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, and also, if you're going to the grocery store, let's say you don't have a fish shop, and you were choosing from among all of those things you see in the freezer, what would you be choosing? You know, there's a lot of places actually in the grocery store that you can find wild, sustainable seafood. Um, look for Alaska on the packaging or the signage. You can go straight to your fresh counter, get fresh seafood there. Ask your fishmonger for Alaska. They'll point you in the right direction. But then you can go to the freezer aisle. Frozen seafood is a fabulous option all year round. Again, look for that Alaska on the labeling. Um, or the canned food aisle. You can mm -hmm. find awesome wild caught uh, Alaskan salmon at the canned food aisle as well. And I can tell you fresh seafood is incredible. It's beautiful, but frozen and canned seafood is actually a staple in my house all sure. year long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's delicious. Th Hannah, re very educational. Thank, Thank you. you we'll Hannah. be at the fish you, Hannah. market tonight. One person's trash is another's treasure. Well, what about one person's trash is another's dinner? Mm, <laughs> our next guest is an urban forager, AKA a dumpster diver, but he's got a good reason for doing it. And now he's sharing the lessons he's learned about the staggering amount of food we all throw away. Crisp apples, artisanal breads, fresh veggies, a beautiful bounty, all courtesy of your local dumpster. I'm en route to the dumpster right now. A lot of the food that's going to waste isn't bad food. That's right. Cameron McLeish is a dumpster diver, spending the last four years collecting food from commercial trash containers. In college, he witnessed stores tossing out loads of fresh food, and he knew he just had to do something about it. Supermarkets, grocery stores, local businesses, even us at home, are throwing out perfectly good food on a daily basis. All these perfectly good mandarins were grown and uh, sent over to the grocery store to be consumed, only to end up in the dumpster. And because one little mandarin had spoiled. Pretty shocking stuff. McLeish created a YouTube channel to highlight just how much food is tossed out on a daily basis. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Trash. This is all from a single dumpster diving mission. Cameron then uses the trash he finds to make edible feasts with the help of his mom, Ellen, a professional sous chef. All right, this is the finished meal. Together, they make tasty treasure from trash to bring awareness to the food waste crisis. <laughs> Cameron and Ellen, welcome. Welcome. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So how did this get started? I mean, what was the um, genesis of this? Yeah, so I had started dumpster diving um, and just through friends and stuff. And then it was just kind of a spur of the moment idea. I just, you just uh, thought, hey, let me go into this <laughs> dumpster and pull out some food. Exactly, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, well, I had, I had a group of friends that had basically introduced me to it. And um, when I had first seen how much food was actually in the dumpsters, it was like opening up a treasure chest. It was amazing. Like, oh my God, there's all this perfectly good food. Because 
My understanding, as well as most people's understanding of the dumpster, is it's a, a designed to hold waste, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is that this isn't always the case. There's so much good food that is thrown out on a daily basis. So. Why? Um, we're not actually quite sure. Um, a lot of it is due to the expiration dates. Um, if they have to, you know, if they haven't sold anything by the end of the day, and they have to, you know, throw it out um, and make room for extra st stock. So we're not quite sure. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for them to donate the food as well to to make use of that food. I've always heard it was like a liability issue because sometimes you'll go to big banquets or you go to hotels <laughs> or these big venues, right? Yes. And people don't eat their chicken dinners or what have you, or they, nobody touches the dessert or, or the bread basket. And you see all of that taken to yep. the back. We're told I. I've always been told that they couldn't eat it, so they have to throw it out. So if I could chime in as a chef, that is in fact the case. If it it's is. ever served to somebody, whether mm -hmm. you touch it or not, that must be wasted food. So you're a sous chef. What did yes, you think about this at first? Ew. <laughs> She's not even lie. I'll She's be like, totally Whoa. honest with you. Um, dumpster food in my kitchen, and we're gonna eat it. I don't yeah. know. I think the first time he brought a haul um, home. I became very emotional about it because it was a mountain of edible food mm -hmm. and that's a tragedy um, that we have so many food insecure people all over and here's all of this food why can't we connect the two and that's how the project kind of started. Yeah. And so why, why the YouTube channel? I just thought it would be a great uh, platform to get the message out there. The whole point of this is to expose the realities of food waste um, and I was looking at a you know, different options. How can I get the message out there? How can I, you know, have, get people to engage and be interested and, and want to make a difference? And so mm -hmm. for me, the easiest route was to make a YouTube channel. It's, you know, free to start and uh, it's got, a, you know, millions and millions of, maybe even billions of, of, of viewers. Uh, so I thought this would be a great place to uh, start this little project. I have to admit, I was watching some of the videos. You make some impressive impressive dishes. Yes, well, that's, that's all her. Seriously. I can make cereal, that's about it. She's like, <laughs> she's like, I got you. I mean, but what's the takeaway? I mean, because most mm. people probably aren't gonna go out and look in the dumpster and, and find something to eat, but is it just the rate to raise awareness of of the problem? Right, yeah, we're, we're not yes. necessarily promoting um, dumpster diving. Although it is legal in the United States, there are, you know, certain laws that- Like if, it's a, if a dumpster is on private property. On private property, that would that's be- trespassing. That's trespassing. Yep. in which case exactly. we, we're not promoting that in any shape or form. Um, right. So we're, this project is mostly to kind of reveal the amount of food waste yeah. that we that we currently are facing, not only here in the U.S., but all over the all world. Over. And here in the United States, I think the, the number is like 40 percent. 40 percent, yeah. Which and that's wow. almost half of the food that is produced ends like up in the bins. 130 that's, billion tons of yeah, food. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. In fact, you brought some stuff. You found this we in did. a dumpster here yeah. in New York City. So we actually went dumpster diving last night, and it's not it's not a big haul, um, but we, we got some, <laughs> we got some bread, we got a couple of radishes there, we got uh, uh, some peppers as well. Is, so. that, is that a jalapeno in your face? Yeah. Can you do hear my joke? Well, you can no. tell the joke on your show. Tell them the joke. Tell them the joke. What does a pepper do when it gets mad? Um, I don't know. It gets jalapeno face. <laughs> I like Close the drum it's better the second time. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. Well, Cameron, Ellen, thank you so yeah, much. No problem. Thank you. Okay, maybe you'll come fresh. back and cook it for is. us. Hello, good friends and people of Today in 30. You're watching Today All Day. We hope you had a great weekend. And we love that you're starting your Monday with us. It's another big week here in Studio 1A. And here's what's coming up. First, that big news about the COVID vaccine for kids. Yeah, we're going to have a full report on this brand new research just released by Pfizer showing their shot is safe and it does produce a strong immune response in children ages 5 to 11. Plus, the inspiring story of a principal in Baltimore having a huge impact on the lives of her students. Mr. Roker traveled to the Ravens' home and will introduce us to the entire group. And then we are going to end the show with one of your favorite Goodfellas, Ray Liotta. He is back to being bad in the latest chapter of the Sopranos saga. So, SG, it's time for Today, Today in 30. First, NBC's Gabe Gutierrez joins us from Spokane, Washington, a city being hit hard by the virus. Hi, Gabe. Good morning. Savannah, good morning. Hospitals like this one are having to turn away patients from neighboring Idaho because there's just not enough bed space. Nationwide, some schools are having to shut down in person.